Okay, we should be going at some point soon. Uh, according to YouTube, I'm starting. Jeez. Really? You guys oh, are both okay. I, just got the, I got the notification that you went oh, live. That's hilarious. <laughs> Yay, we're live. Woohoo, party time. Excellent. Party time. Excellent. Actually, I was having a conversation about that earlier today. The Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. I'm not, uh, I cannot listen to it without waiting for that one spot where you can headbang. <laughs> <laughs> right? All right. We have four watching, including us three. So, man, we're kicking ass. Welcome, everybody, to Local nice. Four Pack and Quick po Quicks Pokes. Yeah, Quick Pokes. Quick Smokes <laughs> Podcast. Tonight, we have a special, special guest, the beautiful More to Me for Life. Say hi, Liz. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another podcast from Loco Four Pack and Quick Smoke. Uh, you totally should have said Quick Poke. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was focusing really hard not to say it. <laughs> That's hilarious. And we have Nacho and I Stella watching so far. How are you doing, guys? Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. I know Mark will be happy because he's been um, threatening to send his team over to take both Mikey and myself out if we didn't get you on a podcast sometime soon. Oh, no. Maybe not quite that drastically, but it's he keeps harassing us. better not be. I will kick his ass. Well, you'll be able to do that Wednesday um, <laughs> sometime soon, coming to a Fallout 76 near you. Nah, he's already told me I can't kick his ass in PvP because he won't fight back. It's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. He has to fight back. <laughs> right. It was like, otherwise, that's just not right. I, I won't hit a girl. Not the same, <laughs> dude. Not the same. <laughs> he is still fuming because somebody took me out yesterday and I was like, it's okay, it's okay. There's going to be other times when I get myself in trouble with my knight in shiny pigtails. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> that is too funny. Okay, um, since we're just getting started, I'm going to ask, how is the audio there in TV? And we have a vault girl. Is the audio good over there? I think you're cutting out a little short on my end there, Gary, but you, I think you're doing push to talk, correct? Yeah, I do push to talk. So sometimes I do uh, cut some from time to time. I, uh, see, I like to do push to talk, so I don't have to worry about like muting myself when I get ready to sneeze, burp, fart, yell at the dog, whatever. So, you know, I can talk about you guys without you ever knowing. It's great. <laughs> and we have an auto in here, too. Sweet. We are filling up. Hey, auto and vein. And Vault girl, nacho. We have a vein as well. Sweet. We're kicking ass. All We're right. taking names. We got a sounds good from uh, Vault Girl and then a sounds good from Automatic. All right. So Perfect. let's get on with the question, Gary. Would you like to go first tonight? Yes. Um, what was the first um, video game, not counting an arcade, that you ever played? And was it like at your house uh, or your friends or whatever? Um, I'm going to have to say, well... I guess it all depends on the variations of video gaming. I played Carmen Sandiego on my parents' computer. I'm not sure if you consider that a video game so much as my parents attempting to teach me something. Uh, the first video game that I distinctly remember, though, is Resident Evil 1. What was that on? PlayStation? Ooh. Yeah, PlayStation. My uh, my dad decided to uh, pull a trick on me and um, hand me the controller and told me to hold on to the controller and just take him down a hallway while he went to the bathroom and uh, <laughs> he didn't tell me the dogs were going to jump through the window, scare the living Jesus out of me. That's I absolutely hilarious. fell in love with the game after that. Oh, that hilarious. game did have a lot of jump scares in it, uh, which made it great. Oh yeah. Well, another thing that added to the whole jump scare thing in that game is the fact that you move so slow that mm -hmm. you know, it's not like you could really get away from something. You're just like, Holy crap. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to turn step. Turn, step, turn, step, <laughs> step turn. turn. Try to pick something up. Stare at some random object that you really don't need to know the, the description of. Right, exactly. 
I've tried to go back and play them. It's just, it's not the same. The controls are so bad, and I did not even realize it back then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think there's a, a lot of games back back in the day that when we go back to uh, to play it, we're like, oh my god, why did we like this? <laughs> I think, uh, what was it? I tro- oh, what game I tried playing? Um, can't remember, and I'm like, I, I got through about 20 minutes of it. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. So I know we all know, Liz, that you're you're a gamer. Um, what some people might not know but should know if they watch your channel is that your daughter's a gamer too. How does that make you feel? Uh, well, my whole family games except for my husband. He games every once in a while when he feels like falling asleep while holding a controller. <laughs> um, so it, it's just kind of a, a family thing. I started my kids on like the GameCube and we would play uh, games and combat each other and stuff. As far as her doing uh, videos on YouTube, it's kind of weird because she'll tell me she's live streaming and some guy got on there and started saying weird stuff. And it's just, we'll spend hours talking about some of the things she could have said or some things I could have done to them or, you know, things that wouldn't possibly land me in jail if I did them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, it, it's interesting. I'm, I was kind of hoping that she would catch the spark and jump on her own channel and, you know, really take off with it. Cause I think she's got the time and the patience and, you know, the voice that, you know, she would do something with it if she wanted to just, she hasn't figured out what she wants to do yet. I kind of, um, kind of answered like, two of my kind of questions there like uh, do you get very very mama bear with her uh while she's online or no i absolutely refuse to watch her as she's live streaming because i don't want her gearing what she's saying i don't want her to have to watch what she's saying because she knows i'm watching Mm. and i don't want to step in if someone's being irritating to her like if someone starts getting on there and being really really bad i'm like all you gotta do is uh pause the game and walk out and give me the signal, and I'll ban their ass. I have no problem with that. But I don't want to step in, and I want her to handle it, you know? Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, they, you got to gotta teach them to defend themselves. Right. And uh, uh, you also have a wide variety of games you like to put on uh, um, your channel. Do you want to uh, talk about some of them? Well, let's see, I started doing Fallout 4, then I... Uh, I moved on from there when I kind of ran out of places to build and and not really inspiration to build. I had a lot of ideas. Just when I moved from uh, the PlayStation, well, let me start back at the beginning. I killed my first PlayStation 4 with uh, Fallout 4. And after I killed that one, I had to start another save on another Fallout 4. And then I moved to the computer. So I restarted my game several times and just got to the point where I was not so much interested in the main story anymore. And it was kind of irritating to have to go through all the work to find the settlements again and again and again. So I kind of gave up on doing it again. Um, so I moved on to other games like uh, RimWorld. I play uh, House Flipper now. I play a lot of uh, games that I live stream. Right now I'm doing Alien Isolation, which, by the way, I've got to finish that game before 76 comes out. Because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get back to it when 76 comes out. <laughs> Um, played Far Cry 5. Awesome. Uh, just any mixture of games. Plus, I also play a mixture of indie games that I find on itch.io. Itch. Um, usually they're like, uh, I guess you could say, um, beta versions of games or concept ideas. And I like playing through those and giving those feedbacks to them. So as they're developing the game, they can come up with new ideas. I have a tendency of uh, looking for details that not a lot of gamers, they're like, okay, the graphics are good, the audio is good. I'm like, okay, this this horror story is great. It's got a lot of great components, but where's the story? Yeah, exactly. I want to know why it's haunted. I want to know why I'm running from this thing. And that that's the part that I'm interested in. I want to know why. And, and, you know, I could contest to that because, again, I just, uh, as I was talking to you before the show, I, I watched your footage on 76 where you, Gary, um, Mark, and um, Mr. Vane are looking through a haunted um, campsite, I want to say. And 
they're all like, oh, where's the screaming from? And you're like, why is there screaming? Where's the lore? I want to know why this place is so fucked up, which I thought was great. I mean, that, I mean, that attention to detail is good, especially, uh, um, a lot of people are like, yeah, like what happened to this place? Why is it haunted? I am very much hoping when the full thing comes out, that there's actually a storyline to go along with it. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the things, you know, we were kind of discussing that night after, you know, after we run around, I was like, there, I mean, it's cool that they have these random things in there, but give us a reason for it. You know, you, you have to have that, you know, you gave us the meat. We need the potatoes. You know what I mean? Right. So um, I'm with you. I definitely hope that they fill in the gaps with some of those things because, you know, that's that's what makes the game entertaining to me is the story. I mean, sure, we can all create create in our own story, but it's all, most of that's going to be only in our head. You know, head cannon only gets you so far. And, you know, like, you know, we run across some random person out there. They're not going to know what our headcanon is. We need to know what the, the developer's story is as well. Exactly. Well, we all know Bethesda does make a habit of just not explaining certain stories. So I, I hope, you know. I think they do like the fact that uh, they'll put a little tidbit out there and let the fandom run with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um going to bounce over to 7 or 70. Uh Fallout 4 a little bit. Um how far into Fallout 4 did you play? Like how I don't know, did you finish the story or did you just kind of randomly get into it or whatever? But how far along did you get before you really started building in Fallout 4? Um I'm going to say I hadn't even finished the beginning part of the game the before the DLCs. I don't even think I finished all that before I really started getting into the building. I am, I really enjoyed the story. I really did. The story was great. It wasn't great for like a third or fourth playthrough, in my opinion. But the building part is what really, really caught me. Whenever uh, Sims came out, I think it was like Sims 2 or something, I built the hell out of all of that stuff, found all of the glitches and everything. I just really enjoyed the building aspect of that game. And when I found out there was a building aspect of this game, it was like, I just, I couldn't stop. And I would build and build and build. And then finally I was like, God, there's actually people out there doing videos about this. And I started watching and then I found out about the rug glitch and it's like my whole world just changed. Right. It's like everything in my world just changed. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? This is amazing. I can make this go into that. Sweet. And then it all became of trying to push the boundaries how many times can i overbuild the limit before i break something uh how many different ways can i build stuff different looks for it and then i started watching videos and it was like the whole community kind of fed on each other's ideas and it was absolutely great yeah. now do you prefer um vanilla or modded when you build on uh, fallout 4 I prefer modded. I can go without all the extra textures, extra walls and everything, but the place everywhere mod, to me, after having played with it, I don't really want to go back to playing without it. But I will admit that I, whenever I found out about, found out about Fallout 76, I decided to go back into the game. And um, I played around a sanctuary for a while trying to remember all of the glitches. And, uh, oh my gosh. It took me forever just to build around one house. And, but it was like so exciting to do it again, trying to remember how to do all the glitches and feeling so great that I finally got something to fit just right. And it reminded me of how much fun it was to start building without the place everywhere. So I, I want to say I enjoy it because it takes the frustration out of the game. But for the enjoyment of seeing the after product with the limited capabilities, unmodded is better. Hmm. I personally, I like modded because I feel, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's in the future and yes, it's post-apocalyptic and you're limited on what tools, but you have the know-how to build whatever. And, but do to, you, do you really? 
I mean, I, I like to think that people have learned some things. I mean, I like to try to keep it somewhat lore friendly when I build, but you know, having one wall not match the other because one wall is too short. I like to think that my settlers have a knowledge to plug up holes. Well, yeah, yeah. Or hammer at the same damn spot on a hole that wasn't there. Right, right. right. Sorry, sanctuary irritated me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You know when I first saw that, I like honestly thought that I would come back after some time, and the houses would start looking better. Because if too. they, I thought there would be a slight evolution. Right. If they would have done that, that would have been some really top shelf stuff but you know imagine my disappointment when i come back i'm like the fucking hole's still there and the leaves are still on the ground come on y'all we're sleeping in here get these things up right exactly it's like why isn't this stuff cleaned up i'm like that just seems really stupid because first thing you do is start cleaning up like in the buildings and stuff at least you know it's like this is mm -hmm. ridiculous yeah yeah i'm gonna have to agree with you uh, Mark has a question for you. And what game had the best story, in your opinion? Best story for a game. Oh, geez, that's a tough one. Um, Mark, why are you gonna make me think right now, man? I work today. Hold on, let me come up with a five, five more excuses while I'm thinking. Um, yeah, Mark, we promised her we wouldn't ask difficult questions. I mean, I got hosed with chocolate today. I mean, that's how my day is gone. Oh, oh, that sounds hose? Like fun, though. Hose with <laughs> chocolate? My boss was trying to make a drink, and she dropped the cup. The chocolate went all the way up my leg. I mean, I had chocolate just dripping off of me. It was ridiculous. And then my daughter got hosed by uh, orange juice. So, I mean, we just had a marvelous day at work. Um, Sticky. Uh, yeah, it was... My wash machine's having a ball right now. Um, oh, my gosh. I am trying to think back to all of the games, and I am trying really hard to remember all of the stories I have seen. Well, while you're thinking, you know what, Mark? I'll answer your question from my point of view. Um, I'm going to have to say there was two games that I really, really um, enjoy in the storyline. The first one is uh, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. If you guys have not watched any stream of that or um, played it yourself, you're missing out. It's... Uh, one of the most interesting Assassin Creed story. Um, I would love to tell it to you, but I don't want to spoil for those who want to play it. But um, it, it it just makes you want to play that storyline more and more and more to get through it, to find out what's going to happen next. Um, and I think the second storyline that I found really, really interesting was Far Cry 5 with the uh, the cult and the things that they would do and the things that they did to the uh to you um during the game is amazing. They did a very good job in telling the story. For me, I would have to say and it, it, there could be a certain level of nostalgia there for me um because I just remember this game being just blew me away at the time and that Shadow Run was on the Sega Genesis. That freaking game just my brother and I still talk about that game cuz we both played it and it was just it was just it was an RPG and you know obviously doesn't hold a candle for the most part to you know games that we're playing now. We're talking about something that's 20, 25 years old, something like that, you know. So significantly different, but uh just everything about that game I just absolutely loved. Okay, I know which one it is. Well, actually, it's two games. Uh, Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy X-2. And um, it's mostly just because it was a group of people going together and fighting and, I don't know, just having each other's backs. And the, the romance story along with it, of course, I was like early 20s or whatever, whenever I was playing it, and then played it like four or five more times after that. It was just obviously the romance kind of hit me too. Got into uh, watching anime. And before anybody asks, my favorite anime is Princess Mononoke. So, you know, because I've already thought about that part too. No question on that one. <laughs> but yeah, I just really love the story. And the song, A Thousand Words, is my favorite of all time. 
really is. Is there a game that you uh, prefer to play over any other game? Well, I, personality-wise, I guess you could say I, I work through my obsessions, whichever game I'm obsessed with at a, at a certain time. Right now, kind of obsessed with Fallout 76 because it's brand new. Like, I've actually been moping because I can't play in between. <laughs> yeah. And uh, But I always go back to RimWorld. I, I have a love-hate relationship with it. It's like I'll play a couple of times, everything will be going great, I'm getting stuff done, and then suddenly I have like four or five raids back-to-back, -back. one of my favorite characters dies, and I'm fussing and throwing shit. So I think RimWorld is probably one of the ones I've stuck with the longest out of all the games that I've played so far because there's so many different ways to play it. And speaking mm. of RimWorld, we're watching some footage of uh, Liz playing <laughs> RimWorld. Oh, the little puppers are sleeping. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, seventy six. Um, why don't you tell us your likes and dislikes of it? Let's see. So far, I'm still getting used to a lot of the controls. I'm still learning a lot of the stuff. Like I didn't figure out how to work the cards at all until this last day. I just I couldn't figure it out. Um, didn't know about combining the cards or anything like that. There's not really a good efficient tutorial on how to do all of that in the game from what I could tell is either that I was just so excited to get into it I didn't pay attention to it um let's see what I don't like about it there's not enough story yet all the story has to be told through NPCs that are robots or whatever I did they said no human NPCs I was expecting there to be ghouls that were cogent not just the the scorched I figured okay no humans but there were ghouls that could talk. There were mutants that could talk. So far, I haven't seen any videos on finding any of those. Right. Um, mm -hmm. With any luck, so, the real game will have them. But I'm not. I'm not gonna cross my fingers and hold my breath. I'll cross my fingers, but I sure as hell ain't gonna hold my breath. Well, I can tell you, I don't want a bunch of NPCs handing out quests. It would be too much, like every other damn online game that I completely avoid. I do not play online games specifically for that. It's like, go to this person, get a quest, go do the quest, go do, go back. My family, my mom, my sister, and all of them, I come from a gaming family, I guess you could say. They all play those games. They play like Perfect World. They played all kinds of ones before that. And I tried getting into them. I just couldn't do it. There wasn't enough substance to it for me. I want substance. I want the meat of the story. I want to I want more story from them. That's the reason why I stopped playing uh, State of Decay was there was not enough story. I mean, I was happy with the scraps of paper finding out background stories of the people, but they stopped doing that. It stopped uh, giving new personal quests. Whenever it started looping on me, I stopped playing. And hey, I, don't I only want played that it a little bit, and I didn't really see any story at all. Well, Any story well, where, it. Mark? Uh, in State of Decay. Oh, okay, sorry. Well, in State of Decay, it was like the story was hidden. You got background information from some of your characters. And if you went around and read the notes, there were individual notes. Like I had a... Uh, one of the characters in one of my camps had this personal mission that you could go and do that had to do with this guy that he was his handler or whatever that was named T-Dog. And uh, you had to go and get drugs from this, that, or the other. Well, later on, you can also find a note from T-Dog to another person. To me, that was interesting to find that. Because it gave more story that wasn't actually attached to the character about who T-Dog was. And uh, little things like that, just little, bit of, little nuggets of background story was great. Um, it didn't really take much. It just it stopped. Getting new quests stopped. I, I was really excited when I found another one. I just don't want Fallout 76 to fall down that same route. I want they to constantly, I want them, let me not speak weird, um, to keep adding more story bits to it, not just stop where they're at. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, I mean, so far they've promised that's what they plan on doing, is, you know, they're, you know, every so often adding more things to the, the game, you know, to include story elements and whatever. 
And, you know, you kind of touched on it. You don't necessarily have to have a full-blown, you know, three-act story. Sometimes all, all it is is just those little bitty stories that you kind of piece things together. You're like, um, like whatever that, that German town is, Helvetia or whatever, that we went into and they did all the voting stuff. There's kind of mm-hmm. a story going on right there. Like the bombs fell right in the middle of <laughs> Than prepping for an election, you know, and you, yeah, exactly. you, know, you can read some of like the postmaster stuff and they're talking about different things and, you know, different notes and whatever. So, you know, those I, I'm definitely down with. And, uh, on the line of the story, the, uh, the holotapes that take five hours to listen to when you're in the middle of combat are unnecessary, especially since you can't control when they play. Right. You pick them up and they automatically start playing. So people are in the middle of talking to you and you've got this background survivor story. And some of them are just kind of irritating. It's like there's one survivor. It was like a druggie survivor and she was just mad at the world. It's like, okay, you're mad at the world. Please be quiet. Stop talking to me. Yeah, and, I got uh, that holotape too. <laughs> it's like though we don't need their entire life story. The better, the best part of the story is when you have to go look for the story. It's like you found this little piece here and you find this little piece here. Some of it's on holotape. Some of it's on a note. Um, with the haunted area, you really don't get anything. There's just one note telling about the progression of the hauntings, which to me was interesting. And I didn't need a full on holotape telling me all about all that. Um, I, I would say that's probably one of the things that annoys me is the holotapes automatically playing when you pick them up. Well, not all of them do, but some of them do. I have noticed that there's a few of them that just went into my inventory, which I didn't know what the difference was between the ones that auto played and the ones that didn't. Um, let's see some of the things that I do like, I like the multiplayer aspect. I like the fact that I could do my first little build and say, y'all come look, you can actually walk through it. I mean, it's, it's horrible, but you know, you can still just walk through it. Um, the fact that we can share it together, the fact that we, uh, share the adventure together, which is what I really wish with fallout four, we could actually have people come into our build and take a look around or walk around and explore the place. That stuff is great to me. Um, some of the other things, I like the fact that they have a friends list. You can join up with your friends, but you don't have to be in like a team to join each other's server. You can just be on their list, which is great. Meaning you can technically pack out a server with all of your friends you might have to wait in a queue to all get on there but you can you know pack the whole thing out with people you know um and then you can team up in different groups which lends itself to a lot of role-playing aspects if you can get a group together to role play with you um let's see some of the other things there's a lot of stuff to explore there's so much stuff to explore and i'm i'm fiending right now talking about it and uh (laughs) let's see Something that I don't like, uh, I'm getting used to the weapon wheel. I don't prefer weapon wheels in games. I really don't. I'm not. I'm getting used I'm to not it. liking it. I mean, you can. The, the, I don't know how it is on Xbox and stuff. I haven't really paid attention, but you know, you you can at least do the one, two, three, and you know, use your fingers to to go ahead and select that instead of going to the weapon wheel. But it's pretty cumbersome to move stuff to the location where you want it. And that's one of the things I have a problem with. Like the top one is equal sign. Well, that's clear across the goddamn keyboard from where my fingers are normally at when I'm running around, you know, because you're normally an ASD um, Mm -hmm. W, you know, and you're like, okay, so I want to hit, you know, the equal sign so I can, you know, like it put my stem pack there, whatever, when I first, um, you know, favorited it or whatever. And you're just like, yeah, because that, that's what I want to do. Not be able to run while I'm hitting my f- fucking stem pack. And like, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, you guys really thought that one yeah. through. You know, so it, being able to adjust that stuff is, might have to be necessary. Yeah, the the key binds on this game are quite a bit odd. Like the building section, the keys you have to use for building on the PC, not very uh, not very well thought out. It's like you have to use the C and the Z to shift through different menus. I but right that. there in the middle is the X, which is your auto walk. I don't know how many times I almost walked off the cliff trying to build. I did that the I... other day, Liz, and I ended up in over my settlement. Ended up in the water. 
Like, fuck, I'm taking rats. I got to <laughs> You're trying to jump out of it. You're like, Jesus Christ, what a mess. I'm so glad I'm not the only one. I, start, I started walking so many times. It's just, I'm not, I've been mostly a console player my whole life, so I'm very, very used to using the controller. So when I went to PC, I still have to look down at my keys most of the time. Like, I'll stick my hands in the completely the wrong spot and blow myself up sometimes. <laughs> it happens. Um, so walking off a cliff doesn't really surprise me. It's just, uh, you have to take your hands off the mouse in order to use your arrow keys, and then you have to use the C and the Z, so you're having to shift between the keyboard back to the mouse with your right hand. It just seems awkward. Right, yeah. Which is the reason why when I went to PC, I used my mouse, my uh, controller for building. The problem is, is I tried to plug in my controller for playing 76, and the, the keys didn't show up. I didn't know what key to push. So I had to swap back over so I could just figure out what key. Otherwise, I'm just randomly hitting buttons. I wonder if you uh, <clears throat> spend some time and maybe uh, um, do some key binding, and hopefully it'll actually translate over. Yeah, it might. But whenever I tried doing uh, Fallout 4, every time I went back into the game, I had to redo my key binds, Ugh, which was ugly. one of the things that irritated me about playing Fallout 4. One of the things that I really hated is every time I started the game, I had to redo key binds. And for some reason, my start and were to pause or save the game, I had to unplug my controller and go back to keyboard and then plug my controller back in. It was just way too much stuff to remember and just too irritating. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's why I play console. Yeah, computer, PC games can get confusing with controls. I've, I I've prefer... I prefer mouse keyboard. That's what I've been, you know mostly been used to like most of my console gaming has been you know a spider-man game i played the shit out of and and uh madden <laughs> that's about it like everything else has been pc for me well i can tell you one thing that i did appreciate about going over to a keyboard and mouse is most games that allow you to lean only allow you to lean when you're in a battle position of any sort on computer I think uh, Alien Isolation is the only one that actually keybound a way for the character to lean while you're on the console. Like uh, Fallout 4, I think you can lean. I think that was the first one I noticed I could do it on. That you, there's no buttons for it on a console. And there's a couple others that I noticed. There's no buttons for leaning whenever you play it on the console, but there is for the computer. Which, just naturally, if you are in a fighting situation, you're going to lean. You're not going to stick your whole body out there. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it, it makes me laugh and kind of... Every time somebody's like, you know, you talked about, um, you know, kind of Jones into play again. And uh, it makes me laugh because I'm like, God... I can I'm just constantly thinking about okay I, I want I need to do this I want to do that um I got to get this done for prepping before we go do the, whatever our next thing is we're going to be doing and it's like hmm you know like going through all this stuff I'm like I'll just log in no I can't son of a bitch <laughs> Exactly I can't even log in right now not even to play as a group I just want to tinker around with my build maybe you know figure yeah. out what all I can build and I can't even do that I mean, I can't even like log in and like just get the background music so I can add it to a video because my background sucks. My, I've got a damn blue Yeti that I use. So when I talk, it automatically cuts on and off. So there's no like silence in between to use like audacity or something like that to get the, the static out. It's just like cut in, cut out, cut in, cut out. Uh, yeah. And it's irritating. So I can't even get the background music to cover up that cut in, cut out noise. And it's uh, just like, so even just minor things of trying to get some editing done or tinkering around with my build, which I would usually do whenever other people aren't on or do leveling or figuring out my cars, figuring out buttons. I can't do that. I want the game on. Yeah. Yeah. My, I've yeah, been trying totally. to talk my brother into playing and, and, uh, he's like, oh, I've been watching some videos, all the people just dissing it and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, um, I'm sure if you go back and you'll find videos of people dissing the shit out of Fallout 4. And he loved it. You know, he played the crap out of Fallout 4. I think he did, like, 
you know, three or four different playthroughs, and he didn't, never did get into the building aspect that I did and whatever, but he thought it was a great game. And But I'm sure if you go back, you'd find all kinds of people, you know, talking about how it's such a horrible game and nobody should ever play it. You know, and I know Mark, he says, you know, it's a great game, but it's not a good Fallout game. True, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't think it's a great game. So, um, you know, it's just like you can still have fun with it and stuff. Now, my brother does have other reasons why he's not going to play, but to just take it at some random clickbaity guy's word that you shouldn't play it because he thought it was crap, you know, I think is, you know, not giving yourself the, the proper due for the game either. I don't know where that came from. I just thought I'd say it. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I kind of have to take what people say about a game, you know, with like a grain of salt. Some things that they don't like, it's not going to bother you. There's there's so much bad review on like uh, Daisy. Actually, I just going to mention Daisy. That's crazy. Um, there's so, so much bad review on Daisy, but my sister and I very much enjoyed playing the game. And whenever... Todd Howard was, you know, doing all the announcements. He's like, okay, it's a fallout world. You can build, you can run as teams. I was, I was sold. I was like that picture, take my money. It was a chance to run together. I mean, if it, if it gave me the same thing as day Z did and allowed me to build, that's all I was wanting. I mean, they would have had to try really hard to disappoint me with this game. And I do apologize if anybody hears a very horny cat in my other room, she is going through a phase. I do apologize. I'm probably going to have to kill her tonight. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm not going to kill a cat. Um, well, but anyway. You know, we'll never you know, get too terribly upset about horny pussy around. Yeah, it, it happens. Right. You know, and usually it's noisy. So um, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you should hear me when I get like that. I do more than howling outside the door, so. You're not like pumping the door or anything, are you? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you know, you, to each his own. Whatever creams are twinky. Um, <laughs> but like I was saying, uh, I mean, they would have had to, if Daisy could interest me as much as it did and I played that many hours on it, Todd Howard and them would have to try so damn hard for me not to want to play this game. I love the Fallout world, and to say that it's not a good Fallout game to me is kind of a disappointing uh, lack of imagination. Games are allowed to, to evolve. Developers are allowed to evolve. They're allowed to change their game. It's their game. People might have misconceptions on how it should be, but it's up to the developers and the artists to make it what they want it to be. Which means this is a Fallout world people conceived. They put a lot of hours into it, and this is the world they wanted to bring to us. As an artist and a creator, what I choose to put on my channel is what I want to put on my channel. And for someone to tell me I don't need to do it that way is like the biggest damn insult to me. It's yeah. like, you may not like it. You don't have to like my video. Hit a thumbs down if you want to, but it was my choice. Right. That's how I wanted to do. My artistic side said, I want to do it this way. If Bethesda says this is how we want to do it, then damn it, Bethesda, do your own thing. Exactly. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm going to have to agree with you on that. And one of my biggest bitches... Uh, about people bitching about how they hate this game and don't buy it and everything else is that everybody went into it going, this is not Fallout 4. This is not Fallout 4. Well, yeah, it's not Fallout 4. It's called Fallout 76. Exactly. You can't... Like, I know they're... like, It's a franchise. But you also got to remember, it's a different point in time so it's going to be a different story. So it's going to be a different game. Was Fallout 4 like Vegas? No. Was Vegas like 3? No. Was 2 like 1? No. So, I mean, come on. Get off your, your high horse there. We know it's not Fallout 4. It's Fallout-ish mm -hmm. with a multiplayer. Exactly. Um, if it was, if it had come out and it was, I don't know, half of what Fallout 4 is, people would have been bitching that they just got another Fallout 4. There's going to be two sides to every coin. Someone's going to find something to bitch about. Yeah, exactly. To be honest with you. Right, right. The fact that they brought a Fallout world with a Fallout, you know, questline-ish type thing going on. The fact that they can build, they brought the best elements 
of the games that they could. They brought back conditioning from Vegas, which is, I know some people are like, why do we have conditioning on weapons? I don't understand that. Well, because shit breaks, man. It's the apocalypse. Things rushed. You have to clean that stuff. You have to maintain it. That makes sense. Hunger and thirst. It's kind of irritating when you first start out, but it's a thing that happens in video games and in the world. If And then the building aspect. and they, To me, it makes sense. I ain't saying I like having to carry around an ass load of food that spools in my pocket, you know, but I mean, it's a thing that happens. To me, I don't know. I set my sights on it so low that I was just completely awed when I saw it the first time. I enjoyed it so much. Yeah, yeah. And for for me, the way I look at it is I'm I'm kind of like Mark. Um it wasn't necessarily about the game. It was about the idea of being able to play with you know, all of you guys. You know, we've all become, you know, part of a community. Um you know, pretty much mo- most of us, if not all of us, have some content on a YouTube channel. You know, we've all, you know, part of this community and we all talk amongst each other. And the fact that I can watch your videos and then turn around and go play 76 with you for four hours, you know, that same night. That's pretty sweet, you know. And we can, you know, talk about the game as we're playing or, you know, kind of role play as we're playing. Or we can talk about anything and everything while we're all playing together. And that's pretty cool. You know, and um, it doesn't have to be a perfect Fallout game. It doesn't have to have every lore check in place and, um, you know, no, um, you know, lore redos or anything like that to, to still make it an enjoyable game that we can all go have fun with. All right. I don't know. I don't disregard people's complaints. I t- completely take them into account. I mean... I don't know how many times already Mark's complained about my videos. I take him to an account and then I tell him he's full of shit. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I was just going to, I'm glad you commented on that, Liz, because I was going to remark, Otto, like, listen, don't get me wrong. I think everybody deserves their opinion. Um, only mine matters. But uh, <laughs> To me. Only mine matters to me. <laughs> <laughs> to me, right. Oh, to me, that's, I forgot to put that part in. Um, yeah, yeah. I get why some people are disappointed. I really do. Um, my only major disappointment from this game is that, and, and, and I went into the hype of things of them saying cross platform, cross platform. And I was like, yes, I can finally play with Mark, who's on PC. I can finally play with Gary, who's on PC. And then Sony went and fucked it up for everybody and no cl- cross platform yet. Um, so my disappointment is that I don't get to play with some of my friends. But other than that, like, I'm going to deal with the clunkiness of the build. I'm going to deal with my weapons breaking. I'm going to deal with my food spoiling and have to eat and drink every half hour. It's what makes the game fun. What makes it more fun is that I do get to play with some of my friends. Yeah. Right. And, and I, and I do I, hope that they add cross-platforming back into it. I really do. Well, you know, a lot of people got really geeked up and excited after Sony said they were going to start working on cross-platforming for, what was it, Destiny 2 and and uh, what's that kid game that everybody plays? Um, oh, Fortnite. Fortnite. For, Fortnite, yeah. Um, oh, please don't. My, my youngins info bomb me with that and Overwatch lore, and I'm like, how do you have lore for something like that? Please, please stop. Right. I mean, they, they seriously info bomb me like I'm drooling by the end of it. I don't know what my brain needs to do with all of that. Yeah, but so Sony's going to work on cross-platforming for that and, you know, other games. Then it's just a matter of time where they're going to make it so, you know, as long as Bethesda can work out. Because Bethesda, you know, made the, they made the comments like, well, we have no intention to do cross-platforming right now. Yeah, I'm sure that's probably the case because, you know, I have no doubt that they were like, well, Sony's already said no cross cross platforming. We're not even going to fucking work on it. And then all of a sudden, now Sony's like, um, we're going to start working on cross platforming. And Bethesda's like, motherfucker, now we have to start working on it. Because I'm <laughs> sure Bethesda wants to do cross platforming. You know, just like Bethesda knows that the community wants mods. So what are they doing? They're mm-hmm. working on trying to get a way to get mods, which is going to be, you know, private servers. And so they're they're working on that. That they've said that countless times. I guarantee you, right now they're, you know, 
busting their ass going, okay, we need at least two people over here working on how to cross-platform this shit. So, you know, we can at least get a heads up when Sony finally says, yep, okay, we are ready to do this. We can be prepared to make it happen, you know. So, hopefully one of these days it'll happen, but uh, unfortunately it's not today. Yeah, and they're over there talking about the stash boxes. I am so glad that they're going to fix the stash boxes because I swear to God, our last episode was like the quest for the full box. It was, oh, it was yeah. ridiculous. Oh, yeah. well, I filled my stash box and rearranged it four times. And I think I ended the game, the, the beta, with a full inventory and a full stash box. So I, I'm hoping they said they were going to do it in the future. I hope they do it at launch. <laughs> Yeah, mine's uh, mine's getting up there. I, I haven't had near as many hours in game as as you guys have, um, but mine's getting there, and uh, it's kind of one of those things. I now know how panicky you were, Liz, at the beginning of last <laughs> session because at the end of this session, I'm like, I don't have a whole hell of a lot of room. I've got like 20 pounds or something crazy like that left. Like, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous. I mean, and then Mike found out, uh, Mr. Vane, he found out that um, doing the bundles, uh, is, and I'm giving him full credit on this, um, well, he, he read it in a forum, so um, it's something we should probably verify. I don't know how we'll do that, but doing the bundles, you can't use that in crafting. It's basically only so you can save some weight and then take those bundles of materials and go sell them to a vendor or to another, you know, person or whatever. Well, they're going to have to fix the vendor pricing because, the, well, the vendor pricing and the amount the vendors carry. Holy crap. Yeah. The, I mean, uh, yeah. That is something that me and Phoenix, well, mainly Phoenix found out is that all the vendors in the whole world are linked. So yeah, if that... you drain one, you drain them all. Right. Early game, when you're still looking for plans, it's kind of easy to say, okay, this vendor doesn't have any plans and I've already drained them. Let's go to the next vendor, see if there's at least some plans I can buy. I can sell some more stuff. Right. But right. what happens when you start running out of plans to buy and they don't have any money, you know? Right. I mean, I bought plans for armor I have absolutely no interest in just because I was trying to get things out of my box. Yeah. I, I'm gonna have to stop picking up wood i can't help it i can't walk past a fucking log without you know getting wood from it but i'm gonna have to stop because i don't have any more space to get wood we were talking about you keeping your wood out during the game anyway you probably (laughs) should stop doing that yeah that's probably true never know who's gonna walk in well, I think you're like the rest of us Fallout 4 players. It's, we're so used to scavenging everything we can and having a place to put it that you just, it's out of habit. Like, right, oh, right. take, 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 take. Yep. Exactly. Todd Howard sitting up in his office thinking about all the Fallout 4 players with a tons and tons of stash laughing evilly about the la- our inability to store any of it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And let me tell you, the pricing is ridiculous. Ridiculous in the game. I uh I even picked uh, better deals for one of my perks, and it only raised it by like a cap. Hmm. Well, speaking of um, perks, um, let's get Liz's opinion. Now we all learned a little bit ago that she only just now figured out how to do the perk card thing. But what's your opinion on the whole leveling and uh? aspect of the game as far as the mechanics and obviously it was a bit confusing but just a general opinion and and that kind of stuff well i like the fact that they're forcing people to specialize that way you have more of a reason to run in a group um i'm not sure how i feel about it because i mean when you go from playing another fallout 4 or fallout game and you have to learn all the abilities yourself you're used to learning all of the abilities yourself and when you can't get enough of the abilities to do what you want and you have to rely on other people, it's a little bit irritating. But as I intend to be playing with other people, it's not that frustrating. There are some people who intend to play it by themselves and I can imagine they would probably get upset about it. Um, I can say probably one of the things that I'm going to have an issue with is remembering that uh, when you level, you only, you know, you only get how many points you put into it. So what happens if you've got, I don't know, two 
let's say three points and say, I don't know, charisma, and you combine two cards and put two on it, and then you've got another card that you would level to two, now you can't use both cards. But if you hadn't leveled that one, you still would be able to use it, but you weren't thinking whenever you combine the two cards, just, oh, yeah, I can combine two cards. I didn't even think about that. Right. I leveled one of my cards using another card because I figured out how to do it. I didn't know I could, I didn't know I wouldn't be able to use it now because I didn't have enough points into it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It definitely makes you plan it out. And I mean, there's things like that. Now, granted, it's as simple as your very next level up to be able to use that card. But, you know, it's it's little things like that where you're going, God, I almost feel like I should re-roll a new character. <laughs> just so I can Exactly. Just so I can, you know, try to do this one correctly, you know. Yeah, like my first character, I didn't even know how to flip between the cards or anything like that. My first point went into charisma because I didn't know I could put it on anything else. It didn't exactly, I mean, the, the issue was is whenever beta first released, I was so excited to get into the game, I didn't even care about setting my character up at all. Um, I spent maybe five minutes. Normally, I'd spend like an hour trying to get my character right. And then whenever they start telling us how to do stuff, it's like you're like, no, let me get into the game. I want to get into the game. But you're not paying attention to the little bit of directions they give you. Yeah. yeah exactly. I didn't even check. Is there a way to go back and find out what those help guides say? Do they have a spot in there for help with this, that, or the other? I know uh, for perks? Work. Yeah, do they yeah. have, can you go back through the tutorial for the perks if you weren't paying attention the first time? If they don't have that, they should probably add that in later on. Like uh, how to do the crafting and stuff like that. <clears throat> you you have to run through a, um, they somewhat give you a tutorial, but it's mission related. So the first time you go, the first town you go to, to when you find the, um, oh, what the hell they're called, the rescuers or, right, yeah, uh, flat, whatever flat, they're down at Flatwoods. Yeah, there's a mission that actually tells you, you know, how to gather uh, meat and how to cook it, and they tell you to cook something. That's part of the mission. Then they tell you how to boil water and stuff like that. Um, so I, I I don't I think once you finish the mission that's it you're done. Um, I, I I think they should have better tutorials because there's a lot of things about the perks that they don't tell you. Um, you know Vic did a video on one uh, where uh, pharmacists where it says you get thirty percent more chance of getting chems. Well, what they don't tell you is that after you initially take everything out of the chem box. Um, there's a second option that says search and you either get something extra or you don't. Yeah. I didn't even know about that button until I saw that video. Never paid attention to it. Yeah, There's a lot nice of things they don't, things. they don't tell you in that you need to know. Like uh, again, uh, the quick boy, you know, I was telling Gary about that earlier. Um, me and Vic discovered this on the stress test. He's like, what the hell is a quick boy? Well, you can, uh, you know, the animation where you hit your pit boy, your arm comes up, and all you see is your arm and the pit boy and the whole screen. Well, there's a button you can push when you do that that turns into like a HUD for like when you have um, power armor on, you know, the HUD that they have there. It's the, it's the same thing. Yeah, so you like... can actually see through it and see if there's anybody coming at you. I did that by accident that I broke something. I was during the uh, last gaming session. I accidentally did that and seriously thought I broke my game. I could not figure out how to fix it. <laughs> yeah. For computer, it's a V. Yeah. I, I watched the video and I was like, thank you for putting this out there. Cause I honestly thought I broke something. I couldn't figure out how to get it back. And I didn't, uh, Vane pointed out that there's a chance that you cannot move your base points around after they're spent. That I didn't know. I thought we could move them around. So you get your 50 points and then you're done. Um, oh, Mark pointed, let's see, Mark's asking, what's the worst or most frustrating game I've ever played? Um, Guardian Angel. Hands down, Guardian Angel. And I hate to say that because I know that there's a lot of people who like those types of games. I was never a Slender Man gamer, like the go into the woods, find the pieces of paper for no damn reason while you're running from something kind of games. 
but I played it because one of the uh, viewers asked me to play it. And it was terrifying, and then it was irritating as crap. Uh, sound effects were okay. The recent upgrade, uh, update of it, is um, the graphics can look really good. They're, they're Obviously, the developers have got a sense of humor about it because their graphics settings are pretty funny. But um, uh, but the thing is, is the people who are developing the game have also got a good heart for the game. They keep working on it. And they've also got like the first shack that you walk into. Um, anybody who plays the game and posts a video about it, they will actually now put your name on their wall. And if you beat it in any of the modes, they add your name to a wall as well. There's only, what, two people since the game has started out that's actually beat the game on hard. Um, I'm not, a... I don't remember how many people who beat it on normal. I don't know how the hell they beat it on hard. I couldn't beat it on normal. Uh, the new version of it, I downloaded it to put it up for the Halloween special that I was doing. And I had a tigress in here with me. The problem was I couldn't wear the earphones, so I left the earphones off, and it messed up my audio, of course. I keep trying it. I never can get it right. Uh, so my audio messed up, and I didn't put it on there. But my name is actually on their wall now because I posted a video about it before. And that was extremely flattering for developers to have even noticed that. That um, is pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, so they are awesome. I can't say it's my favorite type of game. Now, if the developers were to take that idea and actually throw in some kind of a story, it would be 5,000 times better for me. And that would be the only thing that I would say. Then, Mark, you're not paying attention to my videos if you don't know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> <clears throat> I think my most frustrating game that I played was uh, um, Evil Within. I didn't like that game too much. Oh, I loved Evil Within. Evil Within 2 was fucking awesome. Of course, I, that's another one I found the hole in the world because I always find the hole in the graphics. Yeah, I didn't have uh, as good a time as playing that. I like part two more than I liked one. Um, I, I absolutely love those games. I never played those. Um, for me, any game... That is essentially a PvP game. Just not going to do it. I hate them. How did I know you were going to say that? My, uh, probably uh, to single out a single, you know, just a single game. I mean, because I, I just avoid all other games that are essentially a PvP game. Um, but uh, I can't remember if it was the first one or whatever. What's that? What's the... I keep wanting to say Havoc. It's not it. It's uh, Xbox. Um, they're big. Halo. Halo. Yeah, Halo. Um, I can't remember if it was the first one or the second one. It might have been the first one. My cousin talked me into playing Halo with him and his friends, and it was essentially the first time I really did PvP, and I was just getting smoked every time I turned around, and it was just like. I don't know how anybody could find this fun. Of course, they're the ones smoking me, so of course they were enjoying it. My whoever my teammate was, he wasn't enjoying it because I wasn't helping at all. <laughs> and it's just like this is not fun. I I didn't like it at all. And I understand that you know some of the games like say Destiny Two and whatever Destiny One, you know they they have a regular storyline, quest line, whatever. But essentially that game is made to just be a pvp game we're going to give you a kind of the standalone stuff just because and uh you know but it's really all about doing the pvp that's what this game's really geared for and that's uh no no thank you i can't stand it um i'm not even going to try and hey if you enjoy it more power to you but if your name's mikey or denise i'm going to tease the shit out of you about it <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, so he gives us shit every time he finds out we're playing Destiny 2. I really don't care for the, the PvP. My daughter is constantly trying to get me into Overwatch. And she's like, if you got into the storyline of it, if you understood the background, and then they're playing Fortnite and talking about all of that stuff, and I'm like, to me, that's not a game. That's just like a... Okay, uh, oh god, what was the name of it? The There was a, a game that you could play. It had Donkey Kong and all that stuff. It was on the GameCube, and uh, you just battled each other. 
on different things. I mean, it's a pretty much the same thing. It's just more advanced versions of that. And while it's kind of fun, it's not, it's not something I want to do all the time and definitely not throw in a, some random story about the characters that has nothing to do with the game. Right. Now the PVP, like we did the other night, which uh, I will be making sure um, will, um, I think it might make my next video depending on the length, but it'll be one of my, my next fallout 76 videos. Um, the little PVP session that we had the other night, um, mm -hmm. that was fun, but I don't want that my whole fun. time playing 76, just doing PVP. You know what I mean? Right. Um, if it's a, a random kind of, Oh, this guy's being a shithead. Let's teach him a lesson. Now we're talking. You know, oh, I, I if I get killed a couple times, okay, no big deal. I'm still going to come back, and as long as my team's there, I'm going for it. But, you know, if that's what the whole session turns into, odds are, I mean, I might stick around and do it for a day, but if that's what the whole game ends up being, no, I'll be done. Yeah, Mark and I were talking about that. It was kind of, um, it was vague, I guess you could say, about the whole PvP that we did. Okay, it comes up that they are uh, wanted on our stuff. We automatically find out that they're wanted, even if they're standing next to us, which poor Mark was um, the subject of, because then me and uh, Vane decided to shoot him in the face because he was wanted. Sorry, Mark. That was kind of fun, though. Um, because <laughs> he took from something that was owned by somebody else. There was no notification that somebody else owned that group settlement, whatever you call those. And uh, he just took from a safe that was in the building, not something that they built. Uh, and he immediately became wanted. Uh, so we all discussed it and thought it was best to take him out ourselves instead of waiting for somebody to show up and do it for him. Uh, it could have been something similar to that. We don't know if he was trying to provoke us into doing PvP on him or not. It was one of his buddies that attacked me. I got the killing shot on the guy because uh, I saw the notification come up. And immediately when his buddy popped in, was wearing power armor and was shooting me. I went back and watched the footage because I wasn't even paying attention to the fact that I was being shot. I just knew shots were being fired. So I think his buddy either knew his friend was wanted or whatever, but got the notification that I killed his friend. So he was coming after me. The problem is he didn't understand that I was engaged in PvP with him because he was wanted. He just knew I killed his friend. At least that's how I saw it. So it's. I don't know if the notifications are going properly. Like, does your group know that they that somebody just took him out? If I hadn't, I don't know, if I hadn't have seen the notification that he was wanted, his friend wasn't paying attention, would he know that I attacked his friend because his friend was wanted? Yeah, I mean, to me, that's important. And then maybe, maybe they were just setting us up. I mean, maybe the friend was the bait and just to see if somebody would react. Because they wanted to, to have that reaction. I mean, that's a possibility. You know, it's it's maybe that's their their way to to you know bait the hook and see if anybody you know takes it. Well, we did, but um, um, and we had a good time, and they're the ones that died. Well, I died twice, or at least once anyway. I think I died once, and you died once. So. Okay, so we died, but uh, still had a good time at it, and they both ended up dying as well. So, well, I died twice. Uh, everybody got their stuff back. I mean, it was like it was PvP, but it wasn't like devastating PvP. I mean, we still now when it I it gives you the option when someone PvPs you and they kill you, it gives you the option to do a revenge spawn. Right. The problem was, is my revenge spawn revenge spawned me in the middle of a whole bunch of super mutants. So uh, that's not that very revenge weird. friendly. Yeah, it was not fun, and I, then I couldn't even get back to the fight while the fight was really going on. Right. Exactly. And then the whole thing about the weapon wheel, I tried to, uh, I went and got some grenades to try and get back into the fight, and then I forgot to equip them into my weapon wheel. So here I am in the middle of a fight, being you know shot at, trying to get my weapons ready. Yeah, that's totally yeah. Fun. They, it, they they have a quick select button, but it's still a little clunky, so it makes it hard uh, for PvP. Well, that's something else, um, Liz, and I know you're having a problem with your grenades. The one thing about the grenades, if you go into your Pip Boy 
and maybe you figured this out, but I'm going to tell it for all the kitties out there in, in TV land, um, in case they didn't know. Um, if, if you go into your weapons in your pit boy, you'll have whatever your current weapon is that you've got that you're using. You can also select uh, one of the grenade type weapons, so Molotov grenade. You know, you know, fragmentation grenade or you know whatever it is, you um you can select those so you'll actually see two weapons selected, and then you don't have to worry about going to your weapons wheel to select a, a grenade. Um, then it's just on keyboard Alt. You know, like you figured out the other night, you have to hold down the Alt and then let it go, and it will throw it. So um that way you don't have to worry about selecting it in the future. Just go ahead and select a grenade and you'll run around with it all the time. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I solve that problem by just not using them cuz I usually end up blowing myself up anyway. Well, you have to kind of arc it over there and if they're getting close to you, you don't throw it. It's really simple. Yeah, I had a a, a scary incident with a uh, Vic the last uh beta where we ran into like six level 22 mole rat miners. I think of their name. And one of them dropped a rocket launcher, and I'm thinking, well, shit, I got, like, 50 rockets. They're weighing me down. I'm just going to use it. <laughs> and end up blowing myself up, like, twice because they were too close to me. Yeah. Yeah, rocket launchers are dangerous. Which brings me to another good thing I like about the game is that you only hurt yourself. You don't hurt your teammates. Mm -hmm. And the explosives look cool. That's nice. The only issue is, is when Daya was running with us, I was so terrified we were going to blow her up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a, another interesting thing that I thought was pretty cool. Um, we could have a friend run with us, even though she wasn't in our team. So she could still run with us. Though, like Liz pointed out, the one thing you have to be careful of is you can shoot him in the ass. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and, then, and uh don't and take I, damage. Yeah. Sorry. I was just saying and they will take damage. So, uh, you know, uh you have to be kind of careful with that. Oh Jesus, Dad, you always got to point out the little stuff. I'm trying to mute myself. And then I came around a corner when we were fighting on the uh mezzanine and then uh Everybody was fighting stuff, and I ran around a corner because I'd gotten stuck somewhere and immediately started, you know, trying to poke people with my pitchfork, which was what I do. And then at the last minute, realized that was Die running towards me. <laughs> so it's very easy to accidentally injure somebody. The thing is, I noticed that when I shot Die in the butt by accident, that it told me I could continue to fight them to enter PvP. So it gives you the warning that you're shooting a friend, that there's right. a possibility of you entering into PvP with them. Yeah. Before it goes for the full, you're wanted. Yeah, that's nice. And I mean, and the good thing is that unless you're in consensual PvP, you're not doing a lot of damage to them. So at least there's that. But who knows what would happen if you chucked a grenade over there? You know, it's like maybe that would have been some significant damage. So it's nice that you can still run around and do stuff with other people that's not in your team. Um, you just have to make sure that um, for all you kitties out there, um, this would be the pro tip from um, our team is make sure they're in your Discord <laughs> so you can communicate yeah. with them. Uh, die, don't go there. I'm going to be throwing a grenade. You know, something like that, which, we, you know, obviously we didn't say, but um, <laughs> you could if you needed to. So that's a little pro tip from our team anyway. Yeah, I think there was one time that the last mission that we were working on, Mark went down when I went to go back and watch the video feed. I think people were throwing grenades, and I'm not sure if uh, Dai was throwing grenades too, but I think the outer effect of it, or somebody shooting, is what took him down. I don't think it was actually the robots, but then I was like, I was seeing all the explosions, and while I was enjoying the explosions, I was like, ah, shit, you know, if we, even though we're all working together, if we throw explosives, we could accidentally take out Dai, or Dai could accidentally take out us because we're not on the same team. So I was like, ooh, so working together does pose its problems, though it was a whole lot of fun. Yeah, bringing five guns to a, a fight was definitely interesting. And uh, you can mm -hmm. do some serious damage 
um, doing that. Uh, it was actually one of the things that um, I was commenting to Liz earlier is that I really love how your team works together. Like one of you focuses on everybody's health, the other focuses on the lore of stuff, and then you know so on and so on. Like you, you guys as a team work really well together, and I have to say kudos to that. Yeah, yeah. Um... And that's one of the things that I think makes our team really well. You know, we we, we plan a lot of our stuff out. You know, like, um, uh, I don't know. I, I have a little bit of it in my upcoming video. Um, you know, Mark and I think Mark and um, Vane and Liz may have been talking before, you know, when I wasn't around or something. And they all came up with a great idea. And Mark mentioned it that. We're going to have each of us put our camps at different locations around the map. So that way it gives us a free um, fast travel to other areas of the map. So we don't have to run clear across the map to go do something, you know, and, uh, you know, simple things like that. And then, you know, the fact that, like, we try to make sure that our camps all have a decent purpose um, behind them. And, you know, we can get some resources and we can use workbenches and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we're covering each other's rear end for a lot of stuff. And, you know, I think we've pretty much all decided we're going into this as a team event, not as a, a solo. I got to make sure my character is prepped and ready to go. It's more of let's make sure the team's ready to go. And I think that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, that's what makes me want to work with you guys more. But uh, I'm not on PC. Come over to the dark side. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I don't have the money for that. <laughs> but we've got cookies and explosions. <laughs> and explosions. Which are all very, very tempting. But unfortunately, I like console better than I do PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's just because you don't know any better. I you know I've I play I try playing a game once on PC and my fingers aren't coordinated enough. I used to think that, and then um, after playing some games, you know, after playing a game for hundreds and thousands of hours, your fingers like they don't know how to do anything other than that. I've played you know PC games so much that don't tell him that. Uh, I've gone through so so many so many keyboards like you don't even see the the letters on them anymore all the 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 writings knocked off of them and and uh you know I I had some backlit keyboards and I knocked all the black off so the whole keys were lit up backlit you know? and so that was kind of a annoyance <laughs> it's like she's wearing the shit out of these keys over here So is there anything that um, you're looking forward to that is going to be coming out on 76? That you're like, oh, I can't wait for that. Hmm. There is already talk of possibility of DLC, so obviously interested in that, but I've gotten nowhere near seeing all of the stuff. Um, I still want to see whatever the alligator slide thingy is that we never got to go see. And... Um, I can't wait for my loot box to be bigger. And I want them to add more clothes. Is that what you crazy kids call that thing now? Loot box. Sweet. Yeah, mm. I want a bigger box so it can be full too. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought I'd hear a woman say that, but... <laughs> oh, you and should hear the... Size the box. <laughs> you should hear the conversations we have in the middle of our game. It's very entertaining. I put an age restriction on that video if that tells you anything. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even include all of the conversation. There was no way to. No, no. Every bit of it, they got uh, inter the intersected some of the action that was going on got left in. Sorry, guys, if y'all were slightly embarrassed, but there is an age restriction on this. Yeah. Uh, once I finish cutting the video, and I'll have to make sure I pay attention to all the audio, just to make sure that yeah, okay. <laughs> Does this need an age restriction? Maybe. I think all of the 76 videos are probably going to need an age restriction. 
Very, very possible. <laughs> Look at Mr. Bean. <laughs> the box jokes again. It's better than a cucumber. That's right. You guys and your cucumbers. Bane and Mark were finding them all over the place. I I think uh, when I was watching your, your, I think it was the last video, Liz, I had to giggle a little bit because Gary goes, oh, I found a hot dog. And he had slight innuendos about hot dogs. And Gary's like, oh, wait, you know what? I think you were talking. Never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Nine times out of ten, if there's a wrong way to take something, I will take it that way unless it's overly obvious and I should get it and I'll get it five minutes later. (laughs) <laughs> whenever mark was talking about the box i was i just completely spaced on what he was talking about mostly because i'd forgotten what i had said already and uh then about five minutes later i was like oh geez i just got that <laughs> over 40 liz are you talking about my age ma'am you know exactly whether or not you should be asking me my age but no i'm not over 40 I'm getting there though All right, so um, we're going to shift gears a little bit. We'll, we may come back to 76 because, you know. Mr. Bang, you don't need to hold hold on so much there. Yeah, Sorry, right. He said right. he was holding back. Yeah, no, not unless, um, uh, you know, the woman of the house insists on it. We are definitely an adult group, that's for sure. Um, so shifting gears a little bit. If, and this is kind of one of my favorite questions to ask everybody, um, if you were going to build a game of your own, like you're, you were the designer, maybe you don't, have, you don't have to know how the code works or anything, you're just like, this is how I want this game to be. What kind of game would you build? And uh, just kind of describe the atmosphere and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, I would probably take Fallout 4, Fallout 76, and RimWorld and combine it. Um, and what I mean by that is we've got Fallout 4, which has got a building aspect. I love the building aspects in games. Um, Fallout 76 has got a multiplayer aspect to it and a building aspect. Fallout 4 had a building aspect with a good story. So if you take all of those and combine them into one game, I would probably play that until the day I die. Uh, the good thing is, is about RimWorld, and I know it's not a, you know, a huge game, by any stretch of the imagination, most people look at it and it's like, I don't understand it and it's not cool to look at. But uh, it's actually quite in-depth and the modding community for that game is huge. And even after, I don't even know how many incarnations of RimWorld came out, I think I jumped on the bandwagon at Beta 16 and it's been through all of those and it's finally fully out. But the modding community has followed it since its infancy. And every single time you play that game, it is always something new. Every time you get on the game, it is always something new. There's always some kind of trouble to get in. And if for some reason you want to change it up, there is always a mod that will completely redo the game for you. It's like you've got basic room world and you've got uh, Lord of the Rims, which means you can play with dwarves and elves. You've got uh, the Marines version. You can actually go in there as Marines and fight off the aliens. Uh, It's got Cthulhu mods where you can have all different kinds of stuff. If you could take that kind of modding community, add it to a game like RimWorld, combine it with Fallout, Sims, and stuff like that, that would be the type of game I would love to be able to develop. Will I ever have that ability? Hell no. Hey, you sold me. It sounds like a hell of a game to me. You had me at Fallout. Uh, Mark, I am... I will be 38 in four days. Just in time for 76. Happy birthday. It's going to be on my birthday. I expect Todd Howard to come on my stream and say happy birthday to me. Yeah, that's just going to happen. That would be awesome. (laughs) It really would. It would make my my century, but that's not going to happen. I mean, it's kind of funny. Fallout four came out on my birthday and that was the one that kind of started me on fallout i've always said and i, I joke with the ladies that are at our game castle here in town I, I say i'm a bethesda bitch do you have something from bethesda and they're like what i said i'm a i'm and then i got to where i really got to know the lady that works up there her name's jasmine she's absolutely cool i kind of got a girl crush on her she's awesome and um so she and I go in there and talk about it. She's the one who told me about uh, the evil within. 
And a lot of the Bethesda games, it's just like, I can't think of a, a Bethesda game that I haven't liked. So I just call myself a Bethesda bitch. And um, so, yeah, if, you know, Bethesda, if you're hiring, you know where to find me. Bethesda. I have no idea where I was going with all of that, to be honest with you. <laughs> I uh, know. Well, and that usually flows into kind of flows into you know another question uh, we often ask is like is there a certain like um, uh, developing uh, company or whatever that you you like to play? You know, do you, do you follow um, you know Bethesda? You know, especially you know, like the AAA games. You know. Is it uh, EA or or you know, any of those types of things? But no, not, not EA. I, I really do like the Bethesda games. It's like they really know how to immerse the worlds and everything. I mean, I played Skyrim, Oblivion, Morrowind. I played all of those. I never tried the online version. Like I said, I don't normally go for online gaming. Um, I don't follow EA, and I definitely don't do a whole lot of online gaming, so I don't know anything about that. Uh, as far as other gaming companies, I'm trying to think if there's, I really can't think of any off the top of my head. Usually if it says Bethesda on it, I'll at least take a look at it. Some of them, it's like, I'm looking at the cover art. It's just, I, I don't really pay attention to the companies. I, I go for a story that moves me unless it's Bethesda. Cool. So to take that a step further, if, and this is kind of like, I guess, this is my like Barbara Walters type question, right? If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? Um, if you were going to have a, own a gaming company, uh, mm -hmm. what would your name be? The other genre. Nice. Uh Back when I was in, I don't know, a little bit after high school, I thought about opening a bookstore, you know, before books become a non-thing. That was going to be the name of my bookstore. And uh, I've listened to quite a few of y'all's other interviews. So I was like, that's a good question. What would I name my own? It would be the other genre. Yeah. Well, if you were going to uh, make your own development company, what would you call it? So we just asked. Did you? Yeah, where have you been? You fall oh, asleep. Wow. Jeez, what were you doing that you were Must that distracted? In space. I... Really spacing out. In space, sure. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> that was that damn cucumber again, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, no kidding. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. <laughs> then I'll ask this. Is there any games that are coming out in the near future that you want to play? Um, I honestly can't think about it. I can tell you all of the things that I mean, there were some games that were talked about, like the one that has uh, the guy from The Walking Dead. The graphics on that look really cool. And I almost puked when it showed him, you know, picking the sores and stuff on his feet because I don't like feet and it looked that realistic. So I almost puked a little bit in my mouth. Uh, so graphics looked awesome. The only problem is for me, it didn't tell me enough of the story for me to say whether or not I would want it. Uh, I, You know, makes... not to interrupt you, but I got a little confused from their... Uh little advertising for it like i i, I don't i don't know i i can't tell what that game's about either and it does look good but i don't know the premise exactly that was my point the graphics look great but i didn't i mean it's some guy on another planet okay uh there's a lot of games like that and the graphics look cool but what's what are you doing precisely i mean <clears throat> Is it a survival game? I mean, I think it might be, but it didn't really show any gameplay of it. It was just, you know, screenshots and, you know, a movie type of thing, you know, the advertisement. So, I mean, it looked interesting, but I would actually want to see some information about it. Um, I did have a list of things that I was interested in. I don't know where I put my list in my 5,000 areas where I have lists of stuff that I want to keep that I lose. Uh, so I really can't, say what exactly i'm looking forward to it seems like so many times like when new games you see the trailers and stuff and that's just all it is is this is a trailer 
Um, and it's just like, let's see if we can make this so visually impressive that we're going to automatically pique your interest. We're not going to tell you a goddamn thing about it, but we're going to make it look so fucking good that you can't help but want to play it. And it's like, yeah, exactly. um, it's like... I, I want to be an informed consumer. Tell me why <laughs> I'm going to want to play this game besides it looks great. And precisely. I mean, even Todd Howard, when he showed the video, I mean, there was a tiny little bit of gameplay. There was the opening thing. But then he told you, okay, it's a survival, so you're going to have to eat and drink, but it's light survival. It's multiplayer. It's building. Uh, no human NPCs. And I was like, you know what? Whatever. Uh, give me the game now, please. Uh, the vein is open right here. Just shoot it into my vein. I'm good. Uh, here's the money. Uh, that was information to me. I don't know what the hell the other company was doing. I mean, there wasn't really story information. And no, Mr. Vane, it's not going to be the other gender. There's only two. Sorry. You can, you can be confused or in between, but there's still only two. Um, yeah, th that one looked cool. Not sure if I'm interested. I was very disappointed that they didn't have a DLC for The Evil Within 2. I was extremely disappointed with the DLC they made for Prey. Uh, Prey was another fucking awesome game that did not get enough notice. That game was so damn good. The stories in that were amazing. Mm. And for them to screw it up with a DLC. I was so mad. I think you can get that game on Xbox for free. I'm not yeah, sure. I know I looked at it. I was watching uh, someone's information. I forgot who it was that I was watching, but... Uh, they talked about what really caused the problem with Prey is they just named it wrong. They bought the name, and the game had a completely different feel with the original game. It was like there was an Indian main character, and you know there were some slight similarities, but ultimately the game was completely different. So when people got it, they immediately got negative reviews for it. Uh, but Prey was actually a very damn good game. It had a large world to explore, rich storyline, beautiful graphics, some great abilities, some of it was scary as shit. I mean, it was a, it was all in all, it was a good Bethesda game. Just the DLC sucked. I don't think I ever saw anything on the DLC. It was just um, it's like an endless run through a horde where you just try and battle through hordes of things, and then you slowly gain abilities. It does have a little bit more storyline, but the whole thing is a simulation. It's like you play in this big, immense world. You hear about all these stories and all these things that are happening to people. The DLC is a complete simulation. Your character is in a simulation of being on the moon, fighting a horde. That makes no sense to me. You don't get any more storyline, real storyline, from the DLC. So just a, yeah, just a smidge... Uh... Well, not a smidge. Somewhat like um, what Anchorage, um, Operation oh, yeah. Anchorage. Um, yeah, it was very much like that. Yeah, but at least that gave you some storyline. You know, like when you weren't in the sim, and it tell it that told a backstory of, you know, some you know Fallout stuff. So that was kind of nice, but. Yeah, if the whole thing's just a simulation, you know, it's almost like, um, I can't remember if this was a show or something. Oh, yeah, it was basically um, kind of like Lost, where, you know, it wasn't so much that everybody was dreaming that they were stuck on a fucking island, but they were at, <laughs> they were dead, you know, and you're just like, yeah. it's kind of like that. Like, if they did that as a, as a, um, a DLC, it was like, Oh, well, you just dreamt that whole thing you just played. None of it actually happened. You get none of the benefits from it. You're like, you know what? Fuck you, developer. I'm not playing any of your shit anymore. Yeah, that's the reason why I stopped playing, what was it, Silent Hill? Any of those games ever, your character is dead. There's no surprise. Every time you play that, your character is already dead. Yeah, yeah. And that's That just takes, I don't know, there's something in that that just kind of, ugh. I mean, the stories can be great, but when you get to the end of it and you find out your character's dead, it kind of kills the whole thing for you. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's like, why even do the story? Uh, I mean, 
you, you at least need to have that I could survive this aspect to it, you know. Exactly. And uh, I was really, really hoping that they, there was a, uh, a book or I forgot if it was book, tablet, whatever, but there was a storyline that was going on in the background about something called an evacuation day on Prey. You could hear about something that happened on Earth several years beforehand that launched a series of events. The problem is, is it never completes the story and you can't find the rest of the story written down. I was hoping the DLC would bring in the rest of that story. And that's what I'm talking about. Those little pieces of information, like the little books and stuff you find in Skyrim. The, like uh, Mark said, the, the little notes that you can find throughout uh, Fallout 4. Those little pieces of background information, it's like, those are what I want. And uh, I swear, there was somebody I was watching, I forgot who it was. They were like, oh no, I got a note saying such and such disappeared. Guess what? Well, they're dead. Yay! I just did all that for nothing because somebody was dead. It's like that. The whole point is you've got to engage them in the story to want to know what happens specifically to these people. And if you just make it about a quest, then they're really not learning anything. And I hope they kind of stick to that part. So as far as anything that I'm looking forward to year, this year, Fallout 76 was probably the only thing I was really looking forward to. Hmm. So. <clears throat> kind of based of what you you just said is there any game that you've played where the developer or something in the game just like really fucking blew your mind you're like unexpected or wow that was really cool how they did that is there anything that really sticks out in your head that uh, of a game that you played where that's happened i am trying to think of the name of it hang on uh it was part of the Halloween special that I did. It was um, it was the director's cut. Ah, uh, jeez, <sighs> I'd have to pull it up on my stuff. Anyway, it's um, it was a beta test off of itch.io, and the storyline was kind of minimal, but the game itself was only I don't know, three, five, ten minutes longish, somewhere around there. It was not very long, but the uh. The storyline was there. It does need some polish, of course. It's a it's a game concept in the that particular mode, but the the storyline was there. The uh the audio cues were definitely there. The freak factor was definitely there for such a small group that put it together in the short amount of time they usually have to put it together in. It was a mind-blowingly awesome game. Now, the director's cut includes the second part which it still needed a lot of work because it became like a a PT idea, but the suspense wasn't there for the second part. But the the first part was absolutely great. And if I had kept the end of that recording, you can actually hear the point where I lose my voice during <laughs> my recording session. I completely lost my voice between that game and a couple of others. It's like my voice just disappeared. I, I could not even help it. That that game was good. Um, yeah. There was a game that came out, I want to say, mid-90s. I really wish I could remember it. But the game was a complete mindfuck. Like, things, like, it actually made you, like, there was one scene where um, an error would come up and say, memory deleting. So it made you think that it was deleting out of your memory card. Um, mm. I wish I could remember the name of the game. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. And also there was another game where, uh, the end battle, uh, I think it was Metal Gear Solid, um, or one of the Metal Gear franchises where the trick to beating the boss was, um, cause he could tell everything that you were going to do before you did it was to uncontrol, unplug the first controller and plug it into the second port. And that's how you could beat them. That because was, that was actually the only Metal Gear uh, game I ever played, and that one really messed with me. That was that was a pretty interesting little thing to do. I'm sure Nacho knows about uh, the first game I'm talking about. He has a lot of a lot of knowledge on it.
I've seen a few games that mess around the files on your computer, but I don't know enough about computers. That would actually leg legitimately terrify me if something starts screwing with my files. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. No kidding. Um, I think I know the answer to this. Um, I, uh, you've kind of mentioned it a couple years ago. Um, but what is your favorite uh, video game genre? Mm. I'm going to have to go with horror. Uh, suspense horror, not gory horror. I mean, gore was way overdone with like 13 ghosts and stuff like that. But if someone can get me on suspense, that's, to me, that's the best one. I mean, I play a lot of open world building, a lot of all that stuff, but out of all of them, the ones that get my heart racing, those are the Cool. Um, do you have a game that is kind of your go-to um, when in doubt? You just want to relax, play a game, not worrying about recording it or anything like that. You just want to sit down and play and enjoy it. Mm, lately, it's been House Flipper. Uh, it's like I'll just go back and a uh, recent edition of it made it to where you can have more than one profile, which makes this a whole lot easier. Oh, nice. You can go in there and just like mess around with stuff and just see how you can rearrange it. I really, it's very slow going, especially at the start, which is a little bit irritating, but somehow or another, it's just therapeutic. And when I can't, it's like, I know I can go in my own house and clean up, but I don't want to <laughs> because it's just going to get messed back up again. Right. And uh, I don't want to go do my own dishes. I don't want to do laundry. It's just too much work. I, I go on the online stuff and, and do that. To me, that's just, it's very therapeutic. The fact that I can come into that little area, it's like decluttering my mind when I can clean up a tiny little space and say, that's done. Right. And know that it's, <laughs> it's permanently done. <laughs> exactly. Your kids aren't going to come back behind you until you screw it all. Oh, the kids aren't the worst about it, but yeah. So, um, let's talk about your YouTube channel for a while, for a bit. Um, what type of things can people expect from your, uh, your, your YouTube channel? Uh, well, I'm going to continue to do the itch.io and if I can find any other sites that have games in development, I'm going to continue to do those. Um, I was getting into where I was trying to do one horror game a week and one non-horror related game because some of those games are actually pretty fun. Being able to vent and throw airplanes at my boss was kind of interesting, if not completely frustrating. Um, so definitely some more of those coming. I'm going to finish out uh, House Flipper, and I'm going to keep an eye out for their DLCs and stuff. They've got a gardening section that is coming up soon, which everybody was so excited that they were going to come up with one. Um, I'll obviously, Fallout 76, anything that comes out with that. Uh, RimWorld is probably never going to go away. I might get to where... In between seasons, I might take a month off from playing it to, you know, do something else, but it will always be back because there's 5,000 mods and different ways to play that. Um, I'm hoping to, play, to bring back Spatial's Galactology, but until they make an in-game, I'm kind of not wanting to do that because every time they update, which is pretty frequently, it kills the save. And RimWorld, whenever you, they updated, it killed the save, but there was usually a couple of months in between before they would do it again. These guys are doing it at least once a month, and I don't want to rebuild it once a month. Um, yeah, that would be annoying. Uh, yeah, it's just, it takes a long time to get your stuff situated. It's just really annoying to try and do it every single month to change it out. It's really, there's too much time invested for it to just disappear like that. Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything else on the docket. Uh, I am open to suggestions on the next live streaming game. I'm going to finish out uh, Aliens. I am not going to go back and finish Far Cry 4. Uh, I loved Far Cry 5 too much to appreciate Far Cry 4. It actually kind of pisses me off. If I had pl tried to play Far Cry 4 before playing Far Cry 5, I probably would have liked it. But I, I just I can't backtrack like that. There's no story there for me. I think you should try live streaming that uh, that game that Mark played and how to pick up chicks. Oh Lord! See, <laughs> my issue is is 
knowing that in my mind, that guy legitimately said that to an individual. Some of those options, it's like, who would even allow that uh, diarrhea to come out of their mouth? And someone actually wrote that line and said it to another person. Right. And it's like, how did you not, how did either one of you go through that scene and not bust out laughing? I want to see the outtakes for that game. There had to have been some outtakes, like one particular time where he said it just right and it pissed her off and she slapped him. <laughs> yeah. I want to see that one. And um, not to mention, uh, if, if, I don't know, the, the guys that were doing that were not attractive enough to be telling other people or slick enough to be telling other people how they should be acting. I'm sorry, but none of those lines were actually appealing. Um. You mean if a total stranger came up to you and said, hey, what are you doing? You're not going to stop and say hi? No, usually I won't because I usually don't engage people on the road. I am not at all friendly in real life. I am usually very, very focused on where I'm going and what I'm doing. I am not the person who stops at Walmart and talks to everybody. No, I, I can't do that. That's my husband. He is the one who will spend 20 extra minutes in Walmart talking to people. I cannot do that. <laughs> I get physically exhausted approaching people face to face. My I, job requires me to be face to face with people the whole time at work. And I come home and I am so drained. Oh, believe me. I know that feeling. If I happen <laughs> to go to, I, I currently live in the town I grew up in, went to high school. If I happen to go to Walmart or the local grocery store and somebody I went to school with is there. I will purposely skip a few aisles and go down there just so I don't, ha you know, hopefully don't run into them because I don't want to stop and talk and do the, you know, the meet and greet and the, the, you know, the small talk bullshit. That's not my interest. Screw you. I'm out of here. You go do your thing. I'm living my life. If I really wanted to interact with you, I'd call you up or we'd be hanging out on a regular basis. Fuck you. <laughs> exactly. I would text. Um, if someone right. was trying to get my attention, like if somebody was interested in me, if I would have to say my ideal way for someone to get my interest would be somewhere where I can see them reading something that might interest me. Uh, nine times out of ten, I will walk up to a complete stranger and ask them about the book they're reading before I would do anything else. Right. And it's mainly because it's not like a woman can walk up to a guy and say, I appreciate the way you look right now. Not, I want to fuck you. Not, uh, do you want to go out on a date? Just, I appreciate the effort it took for you to look like that right now. And then walk away and nothing else has to be said. All right, it's folks, like, you interfere first. You know how to, now how to pick up Liz. Well, it's like the casual conversation of just saying, I appreciate the way you look. Or I appreciate the fact that you were nice to me whenever you came through the line or whatever. I mean, small things <clears> like that, it's like, there always has to be an ulterior motive instead of, you know, just what you say and then walk away with it. No. You know, <sighs> honestly, I, I, it's hard. And, and for guys and women, it's hard to find somebody who is actually willing to walk up to you and talk to you without an, uh, them having an ulterior motive. All right. If I walk up to somebody and say, hey, what kind of book are you reading? I'm actually legitimately, you know, interested in what kind of book you're reading. If um... I walk up and... If I walk up and, I don't know, just like an attractive guy, you can tell he's been in the gym a lot. He got up and actually did his hair, you know, put on something that was decent besides jogging pants and a pair of cowboy boots, because that happens. It's a travesty, but it happens. Um, you know, to see someone actually puts in like two seconds worth of effort, it's like you want to walk up and say, you know what? I appreciate you. I appreciate that look. And then just walk away. Not ever having to get a phone number a smile, a nothing. It's like walking up and saying to someone, I like your haircut. To me, that would be the same thing, but you just can't, you know, do that. Like if a guy was to walk up to me and say, you look nice today. Sweet, thanks. And it doesn't have to be anything more than that. Well, anymore. Me, that's not a pickup line. Yeah, that's... anymore guys are not going to be doing that, you know, without a doubt, because they're going to be afraid that some chick's going to decide that you're sexually harassing me. <laughs> You know, and you're just like, what? I just gave you a compliment, you know. All these uh, third wave feminists are just freaking out about stuff like that. Like, um, well, okay. 
Well, nine times out of ten, and I'm not going to try and sound sexist about this, nine times out of ten, when a guy pays a woman a compliment, he's genuinely trying to show that he's interested in something more than just saying the compliment. That's just been my experience, and there may actually be, and I'm pretty sure there is, guys out there that are just paying the compliment. Right. I want it to be a standard thing between all sexes, male, female, you know, if you're one of the weird people who think you're in between or whatever. Um, I mean, I, I guess that's a thing. Uh, that you can just walk up to another human being. I ain't even talking about a gender here. You can just walk up to another human being and pay a compliment without anything else. There's no, I need you to give me recognition for, you know, giving you the compliment. I don't need a return compliment. It's just at that particular moment, you smiled at me and I appreciated it. Or at this particular moment, I was feeling like, I don't know, okay, this is going to go way too in depth for this particular podcast. But there's a particular moment in a woman's life where she starts wondering whether or not she's turning asexual after having kids. And just that a guy can walk by and there's just like that split second of a thought. And you're like, huh, that part of me is not dead. Thank you for that split second to show me that it's not gone. Um, yeah, unfortunately, though, I, I, I'm going to you know say it from experience. Um, and, and I usually don't like to get really deep into stuff like this because this is a light podcast but um sorry it, no it's all right i mean it's actually it, it's a kind of a sore subject for me because it's why i got fired my last job um you can't really just go up to somebody i mean the way you say it liz it's proper and i like that you know hey i appreciate the way you look today you look good and just walk away but I mean, you go up to somebody and say, "Hey, you look good," um, or "You're looking good today," and it's like, "Oh, he's advan- he's making advances on me." Um, I actually had an incident where a a girl who is a lot younger than me, around my daughter's age, so I really had no intentions whatsoever of making advances, say, "You know, I really hate it when men stare at me," and I'm looking at her, and she's wearing such tight pants that you could literally map every dimple on her ass. Jeez. And a tight shirt with a push-up bra. And I turn around to her and I'm like, look. I'm like, you can't honestly say, you put that outfit on and say, I don't want anybody to stare at me. Because it's obvious you want attention. Yeah, it is. The problem is, is when you say you want attention, you can't select the type of attention that you get. And people are like, I should be allowed to wear whatever I want to wear. And nobody can say I was asking for it or whatever. No, you're not necessarily asking for it. But there is a certain amount of decency people come to expect. Right. Now, if you don't want it looked at, cover it. Because it's not just men looking at you. There are women looking at you. There's not just people looking at you for one reason or another. People just in general are like, oh, for fuck's sake, could you please put that away? You're in public. I mean, seriously. <laughs> right, right. And and when I said that to the girl, I'm like, look, you know, you can't dress like that and not expect to get attention. She got all huffy and puffy about it and complained. No, that that's the whole parenting thing. I can say I've been there. I was a teenager. I wore clothes for the attention. I mean, I, I reckon everybody's been there because at some points we want attention. I mean, it, it's just like that. But it's like when you put it on, you know you're looking for attention. But at the same time, you want to be able to control the type and from whom the attention you're getting. And you don't get that choice anymore when you don't wear proper clothes. If you want attention from a specific person and a specific type of attention, then you need to dress accordingly and be around that individual. There's where the problem is. Right. I mean, I grew up in the 80s. The shorts that they wore back then, I think, are way shorter and more revealing than they are these days. Men and women were wearing them, you know? The the jogging shorts. Today, if you wear it, I think... Men tend to think with their dicks, and women, and it's, uh, women can deny it as much as they want, get very catty, and automatically label that person as a slut. Well, Am I wrong? I 
Well, I can tell you, anybody is going to talk about anybody and give you labels. It doesn't really matter how you dress, how you look, you're going to get a label somewhere. Um, if you don't want it to be seen, noticed, whatever, don't put it out there. I'm not one of those people that, you know, you have to dress a certain way to make sure you're safe kind of people. But at the same time, within reason. It's right. like, you don't go to the store with your, excuse me for saying this, your vagina hanging out of your shorts. You just don't do that. <laughs> and that has happened. And yes, Mark, I know nobody really gives a shit about all this. I'm sorry. I got the subject way away from games. Um, but uh, the point is, is it's just... Okay, everybody wants attention. There's a certain way to get attention, and there's a certain way not to get attention. Uh, to take it back to the game, as far as that game goes, uh, my issue with the game is, is there's not enough options, and none of those guys really had the lines that would actually fit with the situation. And nobody in their right damn mind would actually say some of the things that guy said. It was just there for shock value. Leisure Suit Larry was a much better pickup game than that game was for sure. Well, Di, I've dressed like a slut. You have obviously not seen... Well, you've... Never mind. I won't get into that part of, of my life there, but um, I have dressed pretty indecently, but I knew I was dressing indecently, and if someone treated me a specific way... I would understand because I dressed that way, but it was a conscious decision. Some people are doing the conscious decision to dress a certain way and then shocked that it's getting the attention that way. There's the problem. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get on a lighter subject. Okay. Lighter subject. Sorry about that. Any video game you can, besides the ones that have come out and disappointed us. Which one would you really love to see made into a movie? Hmm. Let me think. One that I would like to see made into a movie. I would love to see Skyrim made into a movie. Or hell, even Fallout made into a movie. Um, I think Prey would make an interesting movie as well. I'm going to take it a step I further and... Um say movie or tv show because i think something like skyrim or uh fallout would make an excellent tv show i'm not familiar with prey but i think those two would make excellent tv shows because you could just have ongoing things you know and i oh, think yeah. that'd be pretty cool i think skyrim would be better as a movie that way you could get the needs for the uh the good graphics and effects that it's going to need right. because it's going to take a lot of cg to do the dragons and everything and Fallout would make a good TV series, kind of like uh, Stargate and stuff like that. It would be amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I agree. I think, uh, and I uh, and I always say this: um, Dead Space make a great movie. I don't know if anybody else has played that here, but uh -huh. it's got a really good storyline. What's it called? Dead Space. Nope, never heard of it. But you know me. I I don't get... Uh, I'm not promiscuous in my gaming world. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't cheat on his games. I don't, no. <laughs> no, Mark is very committed. Oh, uh, yeah, Mark. Sorry, Gary. Whoever my head going scatterbrain again. Whoever the hell I am. So exactly what are you trying to say, Gary? I'm a gaming slut, man. I mean, my games are all over the place. Mark, no, no, Mark no, no. is a gaming Mark slut. Is a gaming slut. <laughs> Mikey, Mikey is a gaming slut. The, oh, is those, Mikey? Okay. Those I know for sure. Mikey definitely yeah, I, likes to, to get around in the whole gaming world. Yeah, my gaming variety is very sporadic. It'll go from uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey to... Um, Far Cry 5, Fallout to um, Battlefield or, or what's that other first person shooter that's very popular? I can't even think of it. Uh, my mind is just going to mush tonight. Uh, Call of Duty. That's it. Yeah, I was trying to think of that one. I was trying to help you out, but 
Appreciate that, yeah. buddy. That's why I love you. See, I have a girl crush on Gary. Ah, uh, well, you and Mark both. You're supposed to have a guy crush, not a girl crush. Well, I'm a lesbian trapped in a man's body. Oh, okay, that makes sense then. Slut equals Mark. <laughs> <laughs> So does anybody out there in chat land have questions for Liz? We haven't heard much from you guys on that aspect. I have a, I have a quick one while we're waiting for chat to, to see if they have any questions. Um, what are your thoughts with the, uh, for going through 76, what are your thoughts of the um, Atom store and the idea of the um, microtransactions? involved in that well microtransaction is becoming a thing it's been an online gaming thing for a long damn time so as long as they add in the aspect that you can earn those instead of just having to buy them now there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna go out and buy them and get a jump on the game or whatever but um i'm okay with however they choose to spend it because you know maybe they don't have a lot of time to build up their character but they got a little bit of extra money that's fine that they do that they want to spend it that way um, me personally, as long as I have access to put in the hours and get the same things, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Well, and I guess in the way I like one of the things that they're doing with this is it's a one-time purchase as far as the game goes. And then after that, it's free to play. So the idea of having those microtransactions helping to continually pay for the game, I like that idea, you know? Mm -hmm going to allow us to continue playing and i'm totally cool with that now maybe when they get the um, private servers you know you end up you know paying for that or whatever on it for mm -hmm. a monthly thing or something maybe that helps continue keeping the game going so i, I definitely am cool with it now if it's just we're going to do microtransactions for the sake of being able to do microtransactions so we can continue making a shit ton of money from you uh, 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 okay, I have a slight problem with that, you know. Exactly. So, but, and I like, I like the fact that at least none of the things in there are, you know, put you in a pay to win type of, or play, uh, yeah, pay to win scenario, right? So it's not like you're going to go get, you know, some big badass weapon or some awesome armor or something. It's all cosmetic and, and shit like that, so. Uh, and you know you made an excellent point the fact that you can still go in there um if you play the shit out of the game you can go in there and get pretty much anything you want anyway so that is pretty cool well for the most part i agree on the with vein about the whole microtransactions being the cancer and everything but if you figure it this way if you get a game that you buy one time and somehow or another they stick a microtransaction in there and it's a game you play by yourself it's not an online game I don't understand the purpose in having a microtransaction on that game at all. Because after the developers have made it, they don't have to, they're not putting anything else into the game. So what's the point in having a microtransaction to it? Right. If it's an right. online game, they're still developing the game. They have to work with the servers. They're going to have to change things as technology changes. So keeping those people paid and motivated is what keeps the game alive. As soon as you can't pay those people who are doing all that stuff, the game is going to die. So I kind of understand the purpose in the microtransactions when it comes to the online game. Denise would like to know, what uh, do you have plans on uh, any builds in 76? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I was at work the other day drawing a piece of cardboard because I have an idea for a build. But um, since we have decided that we are going to be moving our stuff to strategic places, I have waited. Plus, there's mention of a bit of a glitchiness going on with the building thing. So I decided I would wait on my plan until after that. Though I can tell you, I will be on there on my birthday for the opening of this game, tinkering with shit. And I've got uh, this whole next week off. Then I work a day, and then I've got three more days off. So somewhere in there, I'm going to do a first build video from this game. So that is definitely coming. Excellent answer. Um, now, I've been talking to a few uh, 76 players who have been playing the beta. And about half of us agree 
or half of them agree that they're going to reboot their character on launch, like completely erase it and start over again. Um, I am a level 20. I have a lot of shit invested in my character. Um, I don't want to restart my guy. So um, plus I have a lot discovered. What are your plans? Are you going to reboot your character? Are you going to keep it from beta? What? Well, I was actually going to talk with uh, all of them about it, the whole group about it, because I have thoughts on role-playing aspects. I don't... I, I like the building aspect. I like putting out the build videos, and those are going to those are going to come in to play as well. But something I really enjoy watching and want to try, try my hand at is the role-playing aspect of things like uh, Rust and DayZ. A lot of those videos, even though the games have kind of died, a lot of people will come back for those stories, so I would love to get a series going of a a role-playing group of characters that really will only be helpful if they allow us to create more than one profile. Has anybody heard anything about that? Um, yes, you I, can. You can, right. Vic created a second profile or a second okay. character, yeah. Well, then see, I probably wouldn't get rid of the one that I have for beta. That way I can continue to work with the supplies I've already gotten and learn where new things are and stuff like that. But I would probably want to start a, a fresh character for any role playing type of stuff. Yeah, I've I've been thinking about doing that um, for the same reason. Um, I think that um, if I do want to do any kind of serious role playing, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I I've been thinking about having a secondary character anyway, just to kind of put on play with and do stuff. But I, I'm like Mark. Mark says he's not restarting. I, I don't see where we have, and uh, and like I said, I haven't played as much as you guys have, you know, the rest of my team, um, or our team, it's not my team, um, <laughs> but, you know, the, the we it's not like we've been all over the map finding all kinds of shit. We've stayed in a pretty tight little area, and we've been pretty focused on things that we've been doing, so it's not like we're, like so strung out that we are you know just have you know shit that we've missed and confused and lost and you know everything else you know there's still so much of the game that we have yet to explore and learn that it's not like restarting is going to benefit us in any way because i know some of the reasoning for the restarting is because like you know you pick up might pick up notes or holotapes or something that might give you a quest or something but because you you can't remember where you picked them up. Now it's hard to really go back and, you know, follow up with that. And it's just kind of like, I'm not seeing where that's a problem for us because we haven't been that many places to get that lost, you know? And precisely. And my main thing would just be being able to change the way the character looks according to the way the character would be in a particular storyline. And since you can change your character on the go, there's really no reason to need to restart for that reason. The only thing I would be doing is kind of setting myself back on being able to build stuff. So what's the point right. of restarting? Yeah. Yeah. I, my time in the beta I spent was more exploring than storyline. And th there's just so much in this game that uh, I'm okay with that. But if I really want, I mean, if I really, really want to get down to it and get to the storyline, then I might start a second character, but my character is a support character. You know, he's got the guns, he's got the armor. If you guys, you know, my thinking is if my teammates want to start over, well, you know what? You got a level 20 guy who's willing to team up with you and help you out with the bad guys. True. Um, I think my only issue would be is I don't really know how I feel about where I've put my stats at knowing the things that I do now. But then again, I'm kind of okay with being a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type of character. Well, that right. kind of goes into one of the questions I was going to ask you was if you have a build or character type that you, you're planning on doing yet. Uh, that was pretty much what I was going for. I'm trying to keep my uh, scores kind of level all the way across and all of it because um well at first i didn't really know what i was doing with it and secondly i can't really specialize in what i normally specialize in and that's stealth this the online aspect kind of killed that the stealth does not work the same way 
you get one guy, it automatically spawns in 20 people. It's not whether or not you can sneak up on something anymore. Well, supposedly if you're squatted down, you don't show up on the map. Well, so, it does not stop things from spawning yeah. in. That's true. Right on top of you in the middle of a fight. Very true. Um, Have you um, <clears throat> had an oh shit moment in 76 yet where you're like really got overwhelmed by uh, uh, beasties or uh, scorch or whatever? You're like, oh my god, they just won't stop. When we were fighting the robots, that was pretty damn overwhelming. Oh, doing um, the army thing? Yeah, doing that, doing that thing. The uh... those um those super mutants up there by uh, top of the world was got to be pretty intense a couple times. Oh yeah, that was some serious shit right there. Uh, uh, me and Denise went out on a little scavenger hunt on something, and uh, we got overwhelmed by two level forty scorch beasts and about seven level twenty two uh, scorched coming at us all at once in one building just trapped us. It was like, oh my God, help me. Yeah, I feel really bad for people who are coming in to play single player. It, it does really seem to be stacked. Like they're more or less forcing you to run with people, even if you don't group with them. Because it is way too easy to get overwhelmed. I walked into a town and got surrounded by Scorched on all sides. Did not even realize there was anything in that town. Oh, the Super Mutants with the RPG. Yeah. Level 35 coming down the road, and we just decide to go over there and start poking it, don't we, guys? <laughs> hey, why not, right? Appreciate that. Yeah, go yeah. poke at it. I think that's one of the, the good things about this game is that you think you're safe. Then out of the blue, a group of super mutants or a scorch are just going to come out of nowhere and just hoard you, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, And I'm going <laughs> to put... Uh, I'm gonna put this up in the, the in chat, and I'll put it in Discord here too, in case you and Mikey don't have it. So for those that don't have this, here's a uh, um, a page where you can go, um, kind of plan out your character, and it shows like all of the cards that we know about currently, um, perk cards. So you can kind of go into that uh, that link there. And kind of plan out your character, and if you have, you know, certain things. One of the things I thought was interesting, like I'm gonna do a commando tank, um, and so uh, one of the things I need to do is be able to take a lot of damage, and that kind of stuff. Now, one of the difficult things with being a tank that's um, gonna be difficult from any of the other um, uh, multiplayer games that I've played where you know, you use the tank. Usually tanks have some sort of a taunt that you use that gets all the attention to come to you so everybody else can do all the damage. Um, well, in this game, as far as I can tell, there's no taunting. Um, I haven't seen anything that gets you a taunt. But um, I still need to do stuff so I can minimize my damage. Um, I'm going to use the commando aspect um, to try to... Um, use that to try to get the attention to me. Um, the idea of, you know, shooting a lot of lead down the range, uh, hitting a lot of targets, trying to get them to come to me first. And, uh, you know, so that way I'll get the attention and you guys can pick them off. It's kind of my goal. And, but all that, I said all that just to say, well, this link that I put in was really interesting because they have commando and then they have like expert commando. And then they have one that's a master commando. And it's you get them at, you know, higher levels in the game, like, you know, all the way up to, like, level 45 or something like that. And, like, each different thing is like that. Like, riflemen, same scenario. You have expert riflemen and then um, uh, master riflemen or whatever. And each one, you get three levels of it. So it's like, um, you know, for the commando, it's like uh, you're... I think it's like automatic weapons do 10% more damage or something. So you can rank that up three times. And then you go to the expert one, you rank that up another three times. And then you go to the master and rank that up another three times. So you, now you're like doing like, I don't, I'm guessing like if you're doing 10% more than what you were already doing. So you're doing, if you're already doing 130%, now I'm doing 10% more of that. So 
I'm already doing like even more than what I was. It's actually like 13%, you know, um, kind of a, if you were to kind of think of it from the original standpoint. So it just really starts stacking and, and uh, I wouldn't say growing exponentially, but um, really kind of going up there. So if you can kind of get an idea of the type of build that you want to do, definitely try to go in there. Like if you're going to do rifleman or something like that, then yeah, go in there and try to figure out where you need to go with that. So you can really at least start kind of working towards it because I think that's a game like this. That's where you're, you're uh, going to find the most effectiveness. And that was shared for everybody. Not just for uh, those of us in here having the conversation. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to use that. Maybe I can plan my completely messy character a little bit better. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, and it, you could even do, like, like your idea of doing the jack-of-all-trades, you could do, like, all of a commando, like, just to get in the, all the commando perks, and then do, like, all of a rifleman. So you're, like, doing... So then you could pick up any weapon, right? And still do some pretty decent damage. You know, you're not doing, like, expert damage with a semi-automatic rifle as a sniper. You know, you're not a master at that. But if you pick up a sniper rifle, you can still do some serious damage. So at least, like, if you go have a check, you know, check this out, you know, you can go, okay, well, I know I need to be up to level this so I can get the three cards to get, say, all a commando or, you know, whatever it is. So at least that'll help you kind of plan it out and know exactly how much you're going to need in each one. All right. And whether or not some of them are actually useful, like charisma, how useful can charisma be right now? Except I, for maybe in the purchasing aspect, but... Um... It's it's actually kind of crazy, some of the charisma. Like, to be a tank, there's the, the card in there that um, for a tank is perfect. It's uh, called Bodyguards. And you get... Um, like a certain percentage for each, I think it's 6% for each person in your team uh, damage oh, reduction, yeah. right? And then mm -hmm. you can rank that up three times. So I don't know what the next level is. So like if we're in a team of four, if I got that card, that's 18% damage reduction. And then whatever the next level is, maybe it's another 18%. So it's like 30, 36%, you know, damage reduction. And so that's kind of cool, you know, um uh so but for whatever i don't i'm guessing the reason why it's in charisma is because it's everything that's team oriented plus like mm -hmm. you said buying stuff and whatever that's where you're going to find your charisma stuff i think yeah well as far as team stuff that's going to be great but as far as buying stuff until they do something about the merchants that's those cards are not worth anything in my opinion yeah you get an increase to how much you get from each one of them one, one cap extra Okay, you started with one cap. Okay, now you get two caps. Great. Yeah. They only have 300 on them. Right. Yeah, I, I don't even know how much crap I sold the other day, and I was w lucky to walk away with, like, 25 extra caps. I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. This is f freaking ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, what a joke. You know, I, I'd rather scrap this shit and get the materials than to give it basically give it away to you. <laughs> it's like fucking ridiculous. Yeah, they, they, in my opinion, that definitely has to get fixed because that is one of the major problems right now is um, just getting to that scenario. You have way yeah, too it, much material. Exactly. It wasn't even about really wanting the caps. It was, it, it's not like I could give the merchant the stuff out of my chest. I'm not going to give it to him for free because I collected it, obviously. But it was mostly because there was not enough room in the chest. Yeah. I had almost 200 pounds worth of aid that i just pretty much gave to that robot for plans i didn't want right yeah, just and, to get it out of the chest at least have something in there that you want to buy that would be nice yeah that's more plans more i i don't know well uh vault course vault girl says i think it's the vendor presses are that way to force trading between players but the problem is is if everybody in your group their boxes are full of well essentially scrap you can't really trade between each other except for, oh, I need some circuits. Do you need some circuits? Yeah, you know, swap those things out. But ultimately, it's not going to change how much is in that box very much. I, well, um, to, I guess to expand on what she's saying, maybe she's talking about 
like to role play as a make your make yourself as a vendor well as soon as anybody can actually has anybody unlocked the vendor things at all yet i haven't seen anybody do a vid on that one uh, or you can actually put your own stuff to sell because i haven't seen anything on like can we set prices do we set them up in our places Maybe. no i haven't i haven't come across anything like that i haven't seen plans for it anything like uh -uh. that so i have no idea yeah the only thing i know is if you actually try to trade with someone like if i were to select you and say trade um you set the price for the items that you're trading them so i could say okay. this is five caps each or something like that and so you i think you i haven't really played around with it too much i was just kind of accidentally cut into it so i don't know if it's like um i'm gonna offer this up and you give me a counter offer you know or something i don't know i haven't really played with it. i think um mr vane and mark kind of played around with it for a little while but um if it's that cumbersome though like they have to literally walk up to you and go hey you want to trade like mm -hmm. what now i have to put up a shit ton of neon signs you know general vendor that's like saying come kill me and steal all my shit <laughs> except yeah, for the precisely. except for the cap the the fact that they can't steal from your stash box but i mean you still get the idea on it that's just what a pain in the ass well that's when strategy comes in and i'm pretty sure bethesda's probably considered that you're going to have some of the bases that are intentionally outside of town hiding keeping your stash safe but at least one of the builds from your group needs to be close to a town people frequent with all of your merchant stalls. Right, exactly. And that would... Actually, you could set up some merchant stalls and put plants outside, whereas out in the wild, you'd probably want to put your plants inside to keep the animals off of them. But in town, to attract people and bring them over to your area, put your plants outside and allow them to pick it so that they can put it in their own group, thereby, you know, sharing the wealth. Right. And if you're going to um, make a merchant stall, then, in my opinion, you need to have something. Hopefully, that stall in and of itself has its own stash box. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, that, it needs to be able be to cool. hold a lot. That way, if you've got extra, you can, you know, just unload it in there, set a price for it, and walk away. I mean, I've played online games where you can set your, set your character down and say, hey, I want to sell this for that much, and your character just sits there for five hours, and it's like, oh, okay, let me walk away and find something else to do with my life. Yeah, exactly. I'll just, uh, I'm just going to go over here now. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You need to be able to do something. And that's the, that's the other thing. What do you do? Just sit there and wait for people to walk up to you? You need some other way to do that, you know? Yeah, because... and they said that we were supposed to be getting those vendor things. Right, right. Oh, Gaming for XP wants to know, how did you get into gaming? And she kind of explained this earlier, but you weren't here yet. So, Liz, if you want to touch on that again. Um, well, I've been kind of gaming-ish ever since like Super Mario Brothers came out. But I really didn't get into it until uh, when the PlayStation 1 came out. My father uh, gave me the controller to the PlayStation. <clears throat> and he walked away to the bathroom and said, could you walk my character down the this hallway and i'm like yeah sure i'll walk the character down the hallway uh he didn't tell me that some dogs were going to come crashing through the window and by the way i didn't know that controllers vibrated either so scared the bejesus out of me and uh, ever since then i love gaming i know i beat uh resident evil one like i don't know 20 times after that trying to find all of the things so that's really what got me into it It's just Excellent. snowballed since then. I've, I've never really gotten out of gaming. There's been periods of time where I haven't touched games for a while, but I've I've never really fully been out of gaming. Very cool. Now, apparently Vic's in here, but I do not see his comment in here at all. Is it just me? Mm hmm? Is Vic... Do you guys see Vic in chat? Everybody's talking about Vic in chat. Uh, I don't see I, him I don't either. see him. weird i was imagining it um mikey got anything or we have chat come up with some of the questions now uh die did have a question a little bit earlier let me go back up and see if i can find that uh that was a long time ago actually see if i can find that while um 
we go along here. Um, geez, how long ago was? Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to see it because I uh, I switched to live chat instead of top chat, and I think I lost. Uh, Maybe it's only showing the people that are live now. I don't know how the live chat works in comparison. Oh, uh, oh, Darmeen. He's under the Darmeen. That's the reason why he's showing up that way. Okay, oh, yeah, okay. On. Tricky guy. Going incognito on us. Ah, uh, he's driving and listening. Well, welcome, welcome, Vic. Good to good to have you here. So, Dai's question um, is: What are your opinions on the lack of NPCs? Are you missing them? You uh, think it's a mistake by Bethesda to not have them in there? Uh, you know, any of that stuff? Well, I'm good with the no NPCs. I mean, we've got NPCs giving us quests, and we don't want it too much like other online games. It's just like one person standing there with twenty people around them trying to talk to. Uh, we've already got that with the machines. I would like there to be maybe some added in, but not NPCs like human NPCs. But they did tell us there wouldn't be any human NPCs. I'm waiting to see like the ghoul NPCs and the the super mutant NPCs. We haven't seen those yet that I know of. And those, they said that those are a possibility. So I'm completely okay with seeing those. Right. Uh, I don't. I think it would be a very cluttered world if we saw too many. And seeing how we're supposed to be the first ones out of a vault, it would be weird if suddenly there were just people standing there. Other people fighting and trying to live, that's understandable, but people just standing there? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was actually kind of, I mean, if you want to get technical, weird to see so many people in Fallout 4. Yeah. Uh, just out wandering around. It's like, uh, there, there's a dog, dog, don't don't die. He's dead. Okay. Uh, why are there still so many people alive? Because every time you walk by, there's dead bodies. Yeah. Where exactly. are all these people coming from? <laughs> yeah, right. So Nacho has a question for you. Uh, what's the worst game you ever paid money to play? Paid money to play? Um, uh, let me see. I'm trying to think. Oh, a game that I actually took back. Um, I would say No Man's Sky, but honestly, I loved No Man's Sky. It just wasn't a game that I could put on like the channel, and I couldn't invest a whole lot of time into playing. Uh, I didn't hate the game, and as a matter of fact, they've done a whole lot to it since then, but it was like I paid a lot of money for it when it first came out, and then there wasn't enough there. So I'd say probably that one i don't i really don't invest a whole lot of money in new games i really don't i have to have a very very strong opinion about a game when it first comes out to invest that kind of money when fallout 4 came out i bought the new version i invested a lot of money in that and i played it for a very long time when he announced this i already knew i was going to enjoy it um online game fallout universe people can walk into my builds Already makes it ten times better than Daisy, and I paid money on Daisy and enjoyed it too. So, um, I mean, honestly, I, I mean, I, I can bitch about games I I didn't pay any money for more than I can games I paid money for because I I just I'm a Scrooge when it comes to that. Uh, G four wants to know what your favorite game of all time is. Favorite game of all time. Um, I'm probably going to have to go back to fall, uh, Final Fantasy X and X-2. I mean, in my adult life, that was probably the one that got me back into gaming. You know, that little pause between I was a, a kid playing games and then I was a teenager listening to music and then I was an adult playing games. I guess that was kind of like the, the one that brought me back into it. Or the two that brought me back into it. Nice. Um, Mark wants to know what could 76 or how could 76 be improved 
um, if they made a cucumber weapon. Definitely, that would totally improve it. That would definitely improve it. It'd have to have a little bit of, like, as you swing it, it's got to, it's got to have a little bit of flex to it, you know. So that way, and occasionally, if you hit it too hard, there's like, you know, the juice that's inside a cucumber comes out. Right. Exactly. Yes. Definitely. (laughs) But on a serious note, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, um. I think the graphics could be a little bit better. The The motion blur could go down a little bit. It, it kind of makes for a slightly bad video when it starts working like that. Uh, uh, like, the, like I said, some of the button assignments just really don't make any sense to me. But then again, I'm not used to using the keyboard. So that could probably be, I could probably fix that myself. Uh, they need better tutorials. And in the start menu, they need to have it where you can go back and look at those tutorials in case you weren't paying attention to the first time. Uh, that. Those are my main complaints. I, I really can't think of anything else at this time, though. Yeah, and I, I get somewhat, you know, and of course, we've talked about the weight um, limit for the uh, um, the stash box and, you know, the, the vendors and that kind of stuff. So it feels like they definitely need to have some improvements there. Maybe they're already planning on improvements there. Um, it's, uh, hopefully, when we get the full game, we're actually going to see some of those things and, uh, you know, see how, well, Mikey was saying that they've already got a, a pretty big update coming in for at least the Xbox thing. And uh, for those us PC players, um, just keep in mind, we don't have to delete our current copy. We're just going to download an update to it. So keep the copy that you have. We don't want to remove the beta. It just will get an update to make it a full blown game. Mark wants to know is there a game that made you cry, Liz? Or emotionally invested uh, is what I, he was adding to autos. Um, a game that made me cry, one that I was emotionally invested in, one that I played or watched somebody else play. Because as far as the ones that I've played, uh oh geez it's bad that i'm having a hard time remembering i played it on the channel i know dies played it i don't know if anybody else in the group has played it and i'm having a hard time remembering the name of it um the one with the guy and the kid uh it was like a post-apocalyptic almost like a zombie thing oh Uh, last of us yeah the last of us that one especially at the very beginning that was um I really couldn't talk during the beginning because my voice does a little crack thing and I'm suddenly a chick gamer. So um, uh, as far as getting emotionally invested, I attempt to not get emotionally invested. Even though I do, I try not to show it on a screen because I don't want to be the typical gamer chick type of thing. But I can tell you whenever I'm sitting at home and watching TV, I boohoo with the best of them. So. Well, if a game gets you emotionally involved in my opinion they're doing it right you know um to to me gameplay or you know for games a successful game for me i mean i can play the time the time wasters as well as anything you know um just you know keep me occupied whatever but for games that it's going to be memorable and i'm going to want to play all the time i have to have a damn good story and the gameplay's got to be on point got to be Simple, intuitive, you know, and not cumbersome. Graphics don't, don't have to be, you know, super out there. But, man, you hit me with that story, then, you know, you've got a winner, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you if you care about what happens to your character or the character you're playing, to the point where you're like, oh, my God, why'd you do that? Then, yeah, you've... You've got a good game there. So, um, Vic says, because um, I asked a question, because um, uh, about the bulk items, you can't be broken down um, to use it when crafting. Um, so she was asking if that. Now, Vic, was your answer in reference to that question that I had that no? That's not true.
Mark, you were emotionally involved in True Heart. Now, he did get emotionally involved when Liz got killed. No, Mark, you are not allowed to get emotionally involved when I die because I'm being stupid. I mean, technically, if I, I went back and watched the recording, that guy was legitimately just sitting there shooting me in the head, and I was sitting there playing in my pit boy, not paying attention, just saying he's shooting. I think I deserve to die at that point. I mean, he was shooting me for a while. I even made the comment, he's shooting. He's shooting at someone. I don't know where it's coming from. He was shooting me. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. And also, don't text and drive, Draco. <laughs> yeah, big. Stop texting and driving, dude. You know better. It doesn't matter that we're asking questions. Don't. Unless you're drinking a beer while you're doing it, then it's all safe. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure they're going to get you for the drinking of the beer, not the texting. Right, exactly. Just make sure you have a beer in your left hand and your phone in your right. And steer with whatever appendage is available. Knees, feet, whatever. Um, you know, I had to pause right there because I was supposed to say something whenever you started talking about appendages that he was going to be using. <laughs> yeah, we're not in our game session, you know. <laughs> I was trying to click, keep it like PG-13, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. At this podcast, you don't have to. So... um. Anything else from the peanut gallery? I'm trying to see, think if there was anything else I wanted to ask. So how are you enjoying the podcast so far, Liz? That's pretty fun. Is it what you expected? Not, not expected? Hope for? Uh, I I'm disappointed that there's no confetti, but I don't guess I'd be able to see it, though, would I? Oh, I'm covered in confetti, if that makes you feel better. Oh, it makes me feel so much better. I'm good. Though. Okay. All right. Oh, you got confetti? I went with the glitter. Shit. That's well, going <laughs> to be a pain to clean up. Yeah, yeah. It's easier with a vacuum than a, a broom. Very well, true. I'd assume so. The bristles would feel, feel weird, but, you know, a broom, well, they could just kind of... Uh... You don't oh, know. What, what, what are we talking about? <laughs> right. So is there anything you want to promote uh, on your channel? Um, if nobody's seen the Halloween playlist, it's a good playlist that I put together. Uh, it wasn't everything that I wanted it to be, but I was trying to get as, lot, as much done as I could before Fallout 76. Um, it, was a, it was a huge amount of creativity that went into that because I created a, a role play character. I got to dress up and do some stupid stuff, so... It was really fun to do. Uh, that would really be the the only one that I just recently complete, and of course, Fallout's coming up. So, yeah, Fallout. So, is you, anything? Uh, oh, go ahead, Gary. I was going to say, do you think you're going to be able to get uh, Alien Isolation done before oh, seventy six? I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea. I'm hoping to get back into it tomorrow. I don't have. My uh, my daughter and I work at the same place, and we typically work the same hours, but whenever I request off, she is more or less given my hours, so I still have to wake up at the ass crack of dawn, and then uh, take her to work, and then come back in, and then I have got the whole stressful situation of, do I sit down and fall back asleep, or do I do something? And usually sleep wins. So uh, even though I've got all that time off, it's convincing myself not to go back to sleep. And uh, so I've got a lot of recording to do. And um, yeah, I really do want to try and finish it before then. So there might be some longer houred live streams and they might start a bit earlier than usual. 
Very cool. Hey, this is something I meant to ask earlier. We were talking about your YouTube channel, which we're doing now, which made me think of it. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer streaming or do you prefer making videos? And then um, I, I have a follow-up to that, too. I have to say they both have their perks because, like, um, when I'm live streaming, there's just times where I have nothing, absolutely nothing to say, and I'm, like, all in my own brain. Or I'm really, really pissed, and I don't do pissed very well. Uh, I'm one of those weird people. Well, it, I think it actually happens to a lot of people. Just nobody likes doing it. When they get mad, they cry. So everybody thinks that they're upset because they're losing or are upset because, you know, they're sad about something when really they're trying not to kill something. I do that. So if a game pisses me off, there's no way for me to cut that out of a live stream. Right. Or if I need to run to the bathroom, then there's a, a gap in the live stream. Or uh, someone makes a comment that actually full on make, makes me blush and I don't know how to respond. I can't edit that out. <laughs> uh and it happens, uh, but as far but the interaction is so much more there during a live stream. It's more immediate feedback. It's more energizing. Uh, but making videos, it's like a little little piece of art you put up there. It's like when you watch it, you're waiting for someone to see a part that you put in there, something you hid in the video to see if you, anybody noticed. And uh, you know, usually they don't, but do it anyway. You know, someone's eventually going to see. Uh, or just like, I wonder if anybody got that joke because I'm probably the only one who would think it was funny. And just stick it out there to see whether or not anybody notices. Those little those little Easter egg type of things. It's like you sit on the edge of your seat and it gives you something to be excited for whenever you go to upload the video and you put it out there. And it's like that opening a present for later on to share with people kind of feeling. Yeah. So I, I really like them both. Yeah, I... You know, I like the interaction aspect from streaming to a certain extent. Sometimes it's really difficult to actually pay attention to the chat and all that kind of stuff. Anybody that streams, and I will tell you, because um, she streams all the time, it's really difficult to pay attention to the chat and actually be able to literally play the game. You know, you know, without, yeah. you know, okay, I've gotten to the spot where I can kind of calm down and go, oh, okay. Oh, you had this question like 10 minutes ago. Uh, I don't know the relevancy anymore, <laughs> you know, type of thing. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that that part of it, it makes it really rough for um, streaming. Now, have you thought about trying the, like, the um, uh, chat to voice? Anything like that before? I know uh -huh. um, JPIC uses it, and it seems to be pretty effective for my only hesitation would be those moments when people just can't stand to try and let me figure something out by myself, especially in alien isolation. I'm not pointing any fingers at the chat or anybody in the chat because Mark, I'm going to be Mark, wrong. Mark. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mark. But, I mean... you know, trying to help and like, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it, you should do it this way. It's like, but, but you're just, never mind. <laughs> So I've gotten to where when I get into a new section, I refuse to look at the chat until after I figured something out or to, when I get to the point of, okay, I give the fuck up. I don't know what I'm doing. And then I'll start reading chat, but it's like, I can't look at it because, and Mark, it's not just you, not that I was pointing a finger at you, but there's other people who will jump on and try really, really hard to tell you what to do. And it's great that they're trying to help, but it's like, I want to figure it out on my own or at least attempt to, you know? And uh, when I'm recording, I don't have to worry about anybody spoiling anything for me or taking me out of the moment, you know, like whenever you're really scared or whatever. It's like when the alien's like right over you. I don't know how many times I almost became an alien butt plug because he jumped in right over the top of my head. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I really should stop using that phrase. Uh, but it was like the tension was so there. And I look over at the chat and someone's like, trying to critique me on how I'm playing. I'm like, dude, I'm just playing the game. I'm enjoying myself. Uh, don't take me out of the moment. That was actually pretty intense. It was fun. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> speaking of making phrases that you need to stop using, um, I play a lot with uh, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And her phrase of when a bunch of enemies gang up on her is, I'm being gang banged right now. <laughs> I love that phrase. It cracks me up every time. 
And there's a couple of times when we were playing 76, she goes, I need help. I'm being gangbanged right now. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, what part do you want me to grab? <laughs> <laughs> Am I helping or stopping? I don't know what to do. With me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one always cracks me up. I think the, the most distracting thing out of all the videos I've ever watched, and I do watch a few people for varying reasons, but I think the most distracting thing people can say while they're playing a video game is, fuck me. And I'm like, oh, this took a weird turn. Yeah. <laughs> That's <It's> distracting. A... <laughs> Wait, is that... Were you, were you serious? Ah, oh, shit, no. I tend to say, and, I, and uh, they gave me shit for it the other day, is shit fuck. And I'll go, shit, fuck, shit, fuck, shit, fuck. And they'll be like, ooh, that sounds nasty. Right? Yeah, that sounds something of a fetish there. <laughs> it's yeah, funny at this, this shit we say when we get in trouble. Yeah, Mark gave me shit because uh, sometimes I'll say Jiminy Christmas or something like that. And I was trying to role play as, for anybody that is familiar with the character, there's a book series, a uh, character's name is Mitch Rapp. Mark and I love the series. And this guy's this, like, ultra badass, you know, no nonsense, no fuck around, you know, just doesn't give a shit about anything. He's just there to do his job, and he's blunt, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm trying to role play as him in my evolution of a settlement uh, thing, and mm -hmm. I... Apparently, at some point, I said Jimmy Christmas or something like that, and Mark totally called me out. It's like he would never say that. <laughs> like you should totally <laughs> remove that from your video. And I'm like, "Fuck, I said that shit. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I can't believe I said that. Oh shit. That was funny. I though. think my favorite one that you say all the time, Gary, is holy poop crap. <laughs> holy poop crap. That's my favorite. Yeah. I don't even know what phrases I use a lot. I've I've been called out for a couple of. I don't even remember. Awesome sauce. I think I've used that a few times, but I, I really don't know what I use a lot. I just usually know it involves cuss words. <laughs> yeah, Mark says full retard mode. Yep. You try not to, but you can't help it and you do anyway. Awesome stuff. Okay, so my second part of my question on what you prefer to do was what do you prefer to watch? What I prefer to watch is, um, whenever I'm watching video games and I can be in the chat, I enjoy it that way. As long as I can get involved in the chat, if I'm having to like watch TV and clean house at the same time, I'd rather watch a video, but people don't tend to make the longer videos and I like watching longer videos. I will spend no joke. Most of my day watching videos because, well, I don't watch TV. I watch Netflix and YouTube and that's it. And I go through my list of recently uploaded videos. I'll watch the ones that I want to watch. And then I move on to Netflix. And if someone's got like a, a two hour video, I will sit there for two hours and watch that video. If it's a 15 minute video, I'll watch it and be disappointed. That it right. was only 15 minutes. Right. Right. If you're, um, if you're a Netflix watcher, Liz, um, I'm going to have to recommend a, uh, a uh, show and it's the uh, Chronicles of Sabrina. Mm -hmm. It's a remake of Sabrina the Witch. Um, I don't know if you remember that show from the uh, early nineties. Sabrina, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yes, she's so a, Netflix... she's all in um, patent leather, um, everything now, so it's much more adult friendly. It's a very very dark show, and I think it would be right up your alley. Mm. I'll have to look into that. Right now, I'm kind of watching. Uh, I'm watching Criminal Minds. Well, rewatching it. I think this is probably my third time watching through the series. Um, I think the only thing that, uh, as far as watching videos, I tend to watch videos that don't have the commercials in them, and not because I don't want people to monetize their stuff. It's because I watch from my TV in my living room. And my smart TV gets stupid trying to reload a video after a commercial. And it won't reload it. My whole TV will just freeze. And uh, which really pisses me off. I have to go unplug the damn thing and plug it back in. So some of the YouTubers that I typically watch who uh, put in uh, monetizations and stuff in theirs, 
I stopped watching them because every time I go to watch them, uh, my my TV will freeze. And uh, it's just irritating. But if there's like a video I'm really interested in watching, I'll like move onto my phone and kill my battery in a half hour. You know, I think for me, uh, the YouTubers I watch, I usually watch because their commentary is very entertaining. And that's something I know I got to work with on my videos. Um, but if you could, if your commentary, like I love watching Mark because a lot of his shit that he says is just freaking hilarious. Um, there's I another guy. Spartacus. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, there's another guy I watch, Kodobos, and he's just absolutely hilarious with his commentary. Yeah, uh, I tend to watch people who do the role playing. Um, uh, Gopher and Vertigo. I love watching theirs because they do a lot of role playing and they get into their characters as if not like they're playing a video game, but they try to play it as they are that character. Uh, like, whereas instead of when we're playing Fallout 76, if you're going to go, oh, I've got a mutation. Oh, I've got a disease. No, you'd say, I feel bad. I feel like I've got a, a such and such. They don't they don't take you out of the moment with the character. They turn you into watching the character in the game. Or watching mm. the person in the game as opposed to watching people play a game. Right. Not to mention Vertigo, he does a whole lot of screaming like a woman, which I think is absolutely hilarious because he also talks a ton of shit. <laughs> uh, G4 wants to know, uh, do you play any musical instruments or what music is important to you? Um, I do not play music. Actually, I'm not musically inclined uh, I haven't been able to carry a tune in a bucket ever. Uh, as far as what music is important to me, I tend to listen to heavy rock. I do not like country unless it's some of the older country. And uh, not this pop country that they've come up with. Uh, basically, I'll listen to anything as long as it's rap where I can keep up with the words. Because once you can't keep up with the words, what's the point? Uh, heavy metal where they're not screaming into the microphone. They're actually oh, I fucking hate lyrics. that crap. Uh, rah, 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 rah. Be... Stop growling, you bastard. Exactly. Th th that's unnecessary. There has to be lyrics to it. Uh, country where they didn't lose everything. Um, those are basically my criteria. I listen to a whole lot of stuff. I mean, I don't listen to entirely a whole lot of music. I'm not... I can pick up a song from a movie more than I can pick up a song in real life. Like... I was uh, I was talking to you, Mikey, about I can't listen to Bohemian Rhapsody without visualizing the scene from Wayne's World. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm always waiting for that one spot so I can start headbanging and embarrasses the shit out of my daughter, but I do it anyway. You know, I'm kind of the same way. I uh, I'd be at work when I when I uh, work, um, and I turn around to an employee, and be like, "Guess what movie this song's from?" And they're like, "Huh? What are you talking about?" Yeah, well, that's because you work with a lot of young kids that just don't know any better. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, no, I, 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 I don't play music instruments. I don't sing. I don't, well, I, I say I don't sing, but there are catches of me singing in certain video games. I promise I'm not doing it consciously. So I apologize for anybody who's had to deal with it. Yeah, I think actually this last uh, 76 footage you put out, you were singing a little bit. Uh, you I don't were singing remember. in the beginning of a song, I think. I can't remember if it was you or not. Gary, you're not allowed to put that out there, just so you know. All right, I'll, I'll make sure I, <laughs> I don't do that this time. <laughs> oh, this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, for me, I don't play instruments. Um um except for the skin flute that has to be played um mark <laughs> mark, <laughs> mark when you coming over um <laughs> uh, but music he just polished it for you that's right uh music wise uh very eclectic um everything from blues jazz you know big band um you know frank Dean, um, I don't like really old country, like 50s country. I don't like that shit. Um, 
I'm like Liz. I don't want to hear you growling into a microphone. Um, some I'm I'm not I'm not familiar with a lot of modern music. Um, I haven't really listened to like uh, a modern t- radio station in probably nearly 15 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> killed me with the chat. <laughs> so, oh, nice, Mark. Um, <laughs> But yeah, my one of my favorite games is to is to like like do put like song lyrics into sentences, just to like fuck with people, <laughs> you know. And <laughs> I love doing that, and I love making up songs and singing them and annoying the shit out of my daughter, and uh, singing them to the dogs. So like, um, uh, I don't even remember what it was. One time I took a. Uh, um some elvis presley song and i completely just like used three words and just kept singing it to the tune of whatever the elvis presley song was to the dogs and they're all looking at me their heads are all getting all cockeyed and crooked and uh, i love doing that just making up just random stupid songs and for no fucking reason at all how about you mikey i am I have a wide variety of music that I love and it all depends on my mood. Um, if I'm angry, I like a lot of metal. Um, if I'm in a good mood, I'll listen to a lot of rap. Um, when I go to sleep, I listen to, um, fallout radio, believe it or not. Um, that music really calms me down and helps me fall asleep. I do love old school country and I'm talking about forties and fifties, you know, uh, you know, the songs, mama, don't let your sons become a cowboy. Love it. Um, there's a song on follow four. Um, no, I think it was Vegas where, uh, talks about a, a cowboy who carries a big gun. Um, love that song. So, I mean, it really, like from anywhere from Johnny Cash to Little John, I mean, I got a huge variety. I don't like um, opera as much, and and like classicals like Beethoven and stuff like that. Wait, Mister Vane, when he's angry, he likes to listen to happy hardcore. It helps what the get, hell is Happy Hardcore? Get not angry again. That's what I want to know. What the hell is Happy Hardcore? Is that a band when you're, or a type of music? When you're angry, but you're glad you're angry. Yep. Uh, Gaming 4XP wants to know about concerts. I've never actually been to a concert in my life. Um, have wanted to go to plenty of concerts, but never been able to. So I can't tell you what the best one would be. What about you guys? My first concert was the most badass concert I've ever been to. It was Metallica, Suicidal Tendencies, and Dancing. Um, it was an incredible, incredible, and I had great seats too. It was an incredible concert. One of the uh, best concerts that I ever went to. I uh, was Garth Brooks, amazing enough. Um, he put on a hell of a show. I mean, it wasn't just him up there singing and whatever. It was a full-blown show, and uh, that was pretty awesome. Um, Errol Smith was pretty good, but, uh, yeah, his, um, his was pretty rock solid. Um, and I have to admit it, back in the early 90s, I did go see MC Hammer in concert. That was uh, that was a big production, and at the time I thought it was really good. And then, like I said, then I went to other concerts, and uh, not that I've gone to a lot of them, but yeah. Now, I'm gonna have to say, after saying what I said, the most interesting concert I ever gone to was Marilyn Manson. That did you, guy. Did you have a rib can't... removed? No, that's that's a. I read his autobiography, and that's all fake. You want to know it, it, the 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 true story about that was that um, 
in a concert, he had a Marilyn Manson lookalike come out and started, um, he was wearing a, a strap on and the lookalike sucked on the strap on and then he put him in a cage and the next day it was all like, oh, Marilyn Manson had a rib removed to suck his own dick. Um, all of this happened during a concert? Oh my God, that guy does the strangest shit. Um, when I the concert I went to, he uh, a woman flashed him his tits, uh, her tits. So he turned around and proceeded to shove the microphone up his ass. This oh, guy man. is an uh, interesting guy. Like he makes Gore look like freaking Garth Brooks. I um have to admit I don't think I'd enjoy that concert. I, I'm not I, I'm, I'm not too straight laced, but it's just. I need something that's coherent and kind of planned out, not random, weird, crazy stuff just for the shock factor of it all. I love his music. I think he's a great artist. And the one thing that I actually truly uh, like about him is that he admits it's all an act. I mean, yes, in real life, he's a Satanist. Um, he's a priest in this um, uh, in a satan- his satanic cult. Uh, I don't know if you would call it cult. Uh, but a lot of the shit he does is all fake and for show. Well, I it, I completely believe it. that, but um, just the uh, I don't know. I, I just I I can watch um you know some internet porn for if I want to see all that kind of crazy. Shit. I mean, if you really want to think about it, though, I mean, realistically, look at what Ozzy used to do on stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, you know, he... It was Des Moines, Iowa. He heads off in doves, and he, you know... Des Moines, Iowa is where he bit the head off of the bat for the first time ever. Right. And so, yeah, um, but... I mean, was it Sid Vicious who used to cut himself on stage, I think? Uh, there, I mean, there's there's been bands out there that have done far worse than Marilyn Manson, and people loved them for it. I don't know, not my cup of tea. So anyway, um, shall we move along? Move along. Yeah. Nothing to see here. I think um, I think we're getting towards the end of things. Um, so. I expect that we'll probably see a lot more Fallout 76 videos from Liz on her channel. Um, And, hey, those of you that are in my channel right now, guess what? You'll get to see a lot more of Liz in my Fallout 76 uh, videos as well. (laughs) And likewise, you'll see me in hers. (laughs) It's really weird that way. So, yeah, it's going to be kind of cool and interesting. One of the things that um, was kind of cool was... Mikey thought it was really neat being able to see a lot of the same footage from two different aspects of, of, uh, uh, with, you know, two different people recording. So that was kind of cool. And, um, Mm -hmm. I can't wait to do more of that. That'll be fun. I don't think I'm going to be recording six hours at a time. So then I can then try to break it down into, you know, usable chunks or something. Because it's a pain in the ass to go in and edit down six hours of video. No um, damn kidding. If nobody's ever done it before, it fucking sucks. But I'm not <laughs> going to put out a six-hour mo- uh, video, that's for sure. So, anyway. I definitely think it's a, a great idea. And I think, you know, you guys should collaborate on, hey, I'm going to record this part. And one of you other say, yeah, me too. And then post up the videos kind of close to each other. I kind of would like to do that with a uh, either Vic or uh, Phoenix. Do the same thing where you guys. I love that different aspects of the same footage because I think it's neat where one person notices one thing when another person notices another. Yeah, it's definitely um, an interesting aspect. Uh, something that. I actually kind of somewhat anticipated. I was like, um, at the very least, I'm going to be with three or two other YouTubers. This might get interesting. How many different angles are we going to have from the same same scenarios? That'd be kind of cool. 
And as far as editing, which parts did we feel like leaving in and which parts do we not leave in? Right. And we we have to have all doing the same thing at the same time. Some of us are actually doing other stuff. So it's like, I might have cut this part out, but you left it in because you were actually doing something you wanted to show. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, we we may have to to talk about the fact that, okay, that was really cool. We need to all kind of, if we got that in the video, we need to have that and make sure we get that into a video (laughs) at some point. Because that would be kind of cool. So I think with that, um, I think we'll probably wrap it up. It's been a hell of a good conversation. And uh, hopefully everybody got to learn a little bit more about Liz on all kinds of things. Um, We talked about a little bit of everything, um, gaming-wise especially. But we got to learn about her musical tastes and and, uh, stuff like that. So um, always fun and cool. Um, yes, uh, Mikey just put in her YouTube channel. If you, uh, have not checked it out, definitely go do it. She covers the bases for all kinds of different games. So make sure you do that. And, uh, um, we never did find the screaming girl, but we're going to go back and see if once they get the full game going, if they have any kind of explanation for that. Um, that was pretty crazy. Now, one of the fun things about that screaming girl thing is, Mark and Mr. Vane went up to the area where they thought it was coming from. And when they were up there, she screamed again. It sounded like they were, it came from right where they were at. But from what they heard, it sounded like it was coming back from where the cabins were. So it was kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Um, a neat little effect there. But um, yeah. Liz, I want to thank you for joining us. Um, it was a great time. And uh, hopefully you had a good time. And uh, um we didn't like worry you too much by asking too difficult questions after you've been working all day. No, that's fine. And I had a lot of fun. Thank y'all invite for inviting me. You are very welcome. Mikey, what do you got coming up on your channel? Well, I'm hoping if my, uh, Xbox doesn't keep screwing up some footage of me, Denise and Vic and whoever else teams up with us, some footage of that. Um, uh, me and Denise have been doing a little uh, um, Destiny 2. I'm going to hopefully get some footage out on that. Um, and some more building once I get some ideas on Fallout 4. Cool, cool. Yeah, I will probably, I'll probably be, unless some serious changes happen in 76, um, I'm my builds in 76 are going to be um, unless, um, probably very minimal until, um, more plans are discovered and that kind of stuff. Um, it'll be just more or less survivor shacks that supports the team. So I'll probably continue building in Fallout 4, um, to satisfy my building needs. And, uh, I'll, I still want to finish my survival playthrough and, um, Fallout 1 and eventually Fallout 2. So. Um, but I have a feeling Fallout 76 is going to take up a lot of time in the near future, so. And with that, I'm going to say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs>